All right, we are just minutes away from kickoff here inside Bojangles Coliseum. The Charlotte Thunder taking on Pennsylvania Union. Seems an opener for both teams. The Thunder clad in black, trimmed in Carolina blue, Panther blue, I should say, <laughs> with the black helmets. Meanwhile, Pennsylvania Union, red pants, white tops, white hats. The visitors in town. We are getting ready to sit, kick this thing off. Here inside the Bojangles Coliseum, Charlotte, North Carolina, Arena Football. Q, I know you've been around Arena Football a long time. Yeah. It's good to have it back. Man, yeah. See, I, I, I wish it stays longer. I got a feeling it's going to stay longer with this type of ownership group because it's like a bad relationship. It comes to Charlotte, it leaves Charlotte. It comes to Charlotte, it leaves Charlotte. Now, hopefully, it's here to stay and stay for a long time. That's, that's the goal. And, and with this ownership group, we have something going on in the field here. Hang on a second. All right, with the pregame festivities taking a little longer than normal, they're uh, knocking out some push-ups to get warmed up, I guess. Oh, okay, because I was going to say, this, this is new to me now. Huh? This is new to me, watching guys do push-ups. And, and Pennsylvania's guys are doing it, too. Right. <laughs> hey, whatever it takes to get you loose. We're knocking it out and getting ready to go. I could have used a couple of those push-ups. So as we get going here, looks like the Thunder will be moving left to right, Pennsylvania right to left. Kickoff's taking place at the goal line. And the Thunder will be kicking it away. Eric Amaya. Number seven will kick it away for the Thunder. Meanwhile, deep to receive, Jamie Nixon, number six, out of Butte College. You know where Butte is? Yeah, that's in uh, California. No, it's Montana. It's Montana. close, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I know my man but that's, well, that's where the city is. I'm not sure if Butte College oh, okay, is there. Okay, so because Nixon, Nixon went to the same uh, Juco College as Ann Rogers did. Back in Oroville, California. How about that little tidbit? Amaya's foot is into it, and we are underway. Nixon fields it in his own end zone, coming outside the 10, gets away from a tackler, now to the wall, and he's brought down by Amaya right at the midfield stripe. So Pennsylvania Union will get the ball first 10 at their own 24-yard line, so just shy of midfield. And our broadcast location, by the way, Q, I should mention, <laughs> we are part of the action. I mean, right. we are four feet from the boards. That's what people need to understand. At any point in time, because the arena is no, it's not the NFL, it actually lets you hit and hit over the wall. And we're right by the wall. We have a table. <laughs> they, can break, they can break their fall on the table, but they might break our legs with the table. Right, I feel like it so. was our Monday Night Raw. Saturday Night Main Event. That's awesome. Calvin Lowe. Out of the gun, running the offense for Union. In motion is Nixon. Fumbled snap on the ground. Now rolling to his right is low, and he fires it, but it's knocked down. Wonderful defensive play by T.J. Warren to knock that pass down. Warren, number nine, making the stop, so it brings up second down. Maybe some jitters going on with the offense of Pennsylvania. I well, mean, it, that was unusual to see a snap, the first snap of the game. It kind of, Working the kinks out. Turf Monster got his hand up. Right. And deflected the snap. There so you I mean, go. Remember, it's a home field. Right. The players <laughs> put this field in, so don't think there aren't landmines <laughs> around this thing here for these guys. That's right. All right, so second down for Union. Lined up to our, to right in front of us, Tony McCraw, number 10. We'll tell you about him here in a minute. In motion is Nixon. The ball snapped to low. Low looking downfield. Throws. Knocked down. Wonderful defensive play. Artie Holmes, the safety out of Charlotte, the Charlotte 49er, brings up third down. Nice break on the ball there by Holmes. That was a good play, man. I like what's going on right now with the uh, Charlotte Thunder's defense. They're, not, they're being very stingy 
with the with the uh, offense right now. So that's what you're supposed to do if you're going to be a top tier defense in this league. And the good thing about running the football, Salarte, you're always in the red zone. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good or bad. If you don't score, then there's a problem. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Third and long for Low and Union. Dwayne Marshall will be the motion man. He starts his way towards the line of scrimmage. That is legal in arena football. Low fires over the middle. It's caught just shy of the sticks and a big tackle made by Carlo Thomas, number one. It brings up a fourth and very short. And it, there's no punts, by the way. Oh, no. Point out, not going to punt. No, no. We, so it's, it's either going to go for it or you're going to kick. It's the John kick a field goal, video game rules. No, you don't punt on fourth downs. You go Coaches for it. are allowed in the field. You see Coach Dominic Hart, uh, Hobdi. He's near sideline. He's out of the way. But it is fourth and about, well, less than a yard. In motion is McCraw. Low flushed. He rolls to his right. Now looking downfield. He'll make the first down yardage and then get taken into the boards, which is basically out of bounds. But Pennsylvania Union picks up a first down. Hey, Lowe's a pretty good player, man. You know, he came out of northern Michigan, so he's a pretty good player. A lot of these guys, like I said, they're kind of unknowns right now for some of us. But like I said, it's the introductory, and we're going to get to know some of these guys' names. So I like what I'm seeing from Lowe so far. So pretty good matchup, man. You're going to see, you're going to hear, hear schools like Hawking College, Alvernia, nah. East Stroudsburg. Hawking College is, in, is in like an hour away from Ohio State. It's an Ohio side. I'm going to take, take your word for I it. I got you. I got you. <laughs> First down, the ball spotted just inside the 15-yard line going towards the Thunder end zone. Low, near side, quick hitter to Tony McCraw, but McCraw stopped on a dime. Nice piece of defense there from Emmanuel Phillips, the former North Carolina A&T Aggie. Absolutely. You know where that is. Absolutely. I mean, I we're in North Carolina. We're supposed to know where that is. Well, I was just in the neighborhood earlier. I uh, <laughs> took my daughter to High Point today for orientation. So oh, okay. I think A&T is like right around the corner from uh, from High Point University. So shout out to my man, uh, Emmanuel Phillips. Good play. Good play. No gain on that play. Brings up second and ten. Low out of the gun. McCraw again in motion. Bad snap. Loose ball recovered by the Thunder. Pouncing on it was Jimmy Thomas, number 56. And right away, the Thunder create the takeaway. So they put their offense on the field at their own 19-yard line for their first offensive series. Let me tell you something. That Thunder defensive line been getting them uh, Pennsylvania Union trouble all day. All day. All right, it's early in the game, but it's getting them trouble. And you saw the result. They got the ball. It's the second snap on that drive, though, that they had problems making just a clean exchange. Right. So, I mean, they had two of them roll back to the Absolutely. quarterback low. Absolutely. So, that's something that they're going to, that uh, Hobby's going to want to work with. Coach Hobby, I should say, is going to want to get corrected or get addressed. At least talk about it. Say, right. guys, come on. Absolutely. Let's at least have a clean exchange. Absolutely. Gives, gives ourselves a chance. Thunder offense on the field now. Steph Cologne in a quarterback. Give David Ham first play from scrimmage, and we saw that coming. Yeah. I didn't want to say it until the play was run, but Coach told us pregame, yeah. they're going to run on the first play. Absolutely. And we're going to see a lot of David Ham because of the fact David Ham's a guy, as we mentioned in the pregame, saw time in camp with the Raiders in the NFL. Mm-hmm. You've got yeah. a lot of talent. Right, and that's something you don't see too too quickly in the uh, Marina football is a lot of run plays. But I like the way Coach is trying to switch it up a little bit and try to throw the defense off balance. Well, don't think that Cologne can't throw it because he's got a nice touch on that football. Ham lined up short. Cologne in the gun. He's looking down the left. Now he's going to the corner. Caught at the goal line. And they're going to mark him down just short. Trey Lancaster making the catch. So it'll be first and about a half a foot. First and goal from a half a foot away. And the Thunder like to do this. A big play deep into enemy territory. They're going quickly. Quick snap to him and he fumbles. Recovered by Cordell Cotto, number 47. Unfortunate break for the Thunder. As that direct snap to Ham, they wanted Ham to just dart in there, hit his hands, fumble. But see, the thing about that is, you know, you get too it tell them they, they got to get the kicks out. They're too excited right now. After a big play like that, you may be on a one inch, one yard line, maybe an inch before the end zone. And for that to happen, it just kind of lets the air out the balloon. That, oh, man. It does let the air out of the balloon on that drive. I won't disagree with that, but it also gives that offense confidence saying, hey, look. Absolutely. No big thing. 
we, we made one mistake. We'll get that one back because right. I think that's a confident group because they're on, on the, only on the field for three plays. Right, and they got down. And Absolutely. they got down to the, the two-inch line. So I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of concern uh, from the offense moving forward. That was almost a Pete Carroll Super Bowl decision. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to him. Give it to him. Pennsylvania Union's called a timeout. It's their first of the game, first of the half, I should say. They want to talk some things over. Very fortunate break for Union, no question. Absolutely. Because that was that was six. That was going in. And you see the coach, Union's coach, one of the coaches over there in the box getting it to his uh, defense because the Thunder got down there way too easy, way too easy. So the thing about arena football when it comes to defense is it's kind of hard and easy, to so to, so to speak, because the field is so short. Like I said, you're always in the red zone. All right, Union ball now in their own three-yard line. Low with his feet in the end zone. Keeper flushed to the outside, and he's dragged down there by Fred Williams. Williams is a guy that Coach that was, Bryson really high on. That was Fred Williams. Oh. I'm talking about Fred Williams. That was almost. He's a, he's, he's, a, he's a guy that Coach is really, really pleased with the way that his with his effort. Oh, yeah. And he's pleased with his tenacity. Absolutely. He's the Ray Lewis of the defense, so to speak. Uh, sub, uh, Derek Brooks, Mike Singletary, you are old school. Dick Buck is which one you want. <laughs> I'll take any of them. I'll take uh, any yeah, of them. That's right. Really. That's right. Gain of about two on that play. Now low, quickly out to the far sideline. Caught there by Dwayne Marshall, who cuts it up to the 20, before he's finally dragged down by a couple of Thunder defenders. Carlo Thomas among them. But a quick pick up there of about 18. That's a first down for Pennsylvania Union. Dwayne Marshall got some speed on him. First and 10 at the 21. Man in motion is Marshall. Snap to low. Lost his footing. He falls down, gets back up, gets it to about the 19, where he's finally knocked down into the wall by Warren. To Juan Warren, they call him TJ, making that right. stop. Loss of a yard, so it'll bring up a second down and 11. TJ had a couple of college football tours. He went to Missouri and he went to Murray University, so... Like I say, these guys are kind of, you know, traveling guys. But once they find their home in Carolina, it was happy to take them. Uh, we got a timeout on the field in a scoreless game here inside Bojangles Coliseum. Charlotte Thunder hosting Pennsylvania Union. Of course, you can follow all the action with the Thunder at the website, charlottethunder.com. Check out their Facebook page, Instagram. Follow QCB on Twitter. Absolutely. He's, he's the thunderclapper of them all. <laughs> you like that, thunderclapper? I, I like that. I'm full of those. I, I, got, like them, I got them all night long. All night long. <laughs> oh, man, it's going to be a huge all season, man. Loss of a yard on that last play. The ball is spotted at the 20. So it'll be second and 11 for Union when we return to action. The one thing that we're, I mean, this is all new. I mean, everything with this team is all new. New ownership group, you know, new colors, new look, new everything. And so you have to kind of get used to the the lay of the land with the coaches being on the field and players out of uniform, you know, not playing on the field. Right. You know, because it's a 30-man roster. You dress 22 for the games. Mm -hmm. You got an eight-man practice squad, essentially. It's a unique style of football for sure, and that's one of the more uh, intriguing things about it. And it's so 
it's so cool to watch it in person because you never seen like this before. It's not Sunday or Saturday type college NFL football, man. It's arena football, and uh, there's nothing else like it. Yeah, right in front of us, wide receiver Tony McCraw, number 10 for Union, was doing a little bit of maintenance work on his headgear prior to kickoff after the warm-ups. And I think he likes what he's got now because he's been moving around nicely on the field. Second down low, near side to McCraw. He's got a lot of room. Up to the 20. Down to the 15, cutting it towards the far wall. To the 10, to the 5, and he's in for the touchdown. And he took a shot at the wall as he went in. 25-yard touchdown play. Mike, that was like a, a check down play, and he was sitting there wide open, and he just darted across the field and uh, like an answer sketch trail and took it to the house. Well, that's the thing in the notes, too, in talking to Coach Hobdy pregame. Yeah. He called Tony McCraw his sleeper for tonight. A guy that's got a lot of speed, very difficult matchup for defenders, and he proved the coach to be right there with that touchdown play. Right. And, and you, you, you want to never heard of him in school? He went to Gwinnett Mercy University. <laughs> that's Gwinnett Valley, Pennsylvania. How many and, times have you been to Gwinnett? Uh... <laughs> the next time I go will be the first. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Adam Frank on for the extra point. We have a flag down before the snap. And we have a delay of game. We should point out, and apologies to the officials for being so late on this, our referee tonight is Carlos Torian, and he's joined on the field in the stripes by Marty Smith, Mark per Punick, Joaquin Davis and Wayne Johnson. Those are your officials for tonight's game. Most important one, though, is the guy in the white hat. Right, that's, that's it. Mis that's Mr. Torian to you. Right. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> so delay a game penalty on Union moves him back five yards. So Frank tries to knock this one through. That's oh. blocked. Ball is loose on the field. Big hop right into the hands of Arnie Holmes, who takes it to the house. A fortunate if, 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 bounce right, right at midfield into the hands of Holmes, and boy, was he off to the races. If it was a replay, we would easily broke that down. They went right, right in his lap like it was his birthday. Like, well, it was my birthday today, but it went right in his lap. All in one stride. Didn't he have, didn't he have to break stride. <laughs> right. So what, what's, what's the point score on that? Is that a well, that's, that's what I'm waiting for because okay. that, that should be in the NFL, that's two. Don't you get the def you get a defense yeah, yeah, you get yeah, defensive yeah, absolutely. extra point. So let's see what the point score is on that. So on the defensive defensive touchdown. Okay. On the extra point, just like in the NFL, the defense scores. All right. It's two points. That's a deuce. Okay. That's a deuce. Let's go. So we got a six two game. After the blocked extra point and subsequent run back by Artie Holmes. Well, that's, I'll tell you what, that's going to be a great trivia question years from now. Who scored the first points in Charlotte Thunder history? Oh, it's going to be, uh, it's got to be Steph Cologne. It's got to be uh, uh, David Ham. No, no, no. Artie. Artie Holmes. <laughs> Artie Holmes on a defensive stop, on a defensive extra point touchdown. Oh, probably one of the easiest touchdowns of his career so far. Frank kicks that one off into the end zone, fielded by the Thunder. And couldn't get a number on him until uh, he got into our eyesight there, but that was John Gibson, number five, now, on the return. I'm looking for a repeat in their first possession when it right. comes to the uh, Charlotte Thunder. Get down the field easy. And I, I think this music they're playing... Uh, this Tupac kid him up is getting everybody a little excited around here. That's, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm looking for an easy offense to get down the end zone. Probably well, there, less, less than three plays. No, compl no complaints with the way the offense handled their first series, except for the the, the, the last play, which ended right. up being a fumble uh, on a, just a, a missed exchange on the snap. Cologne over the middle, throws it into traffic, and he's picked off. Still on his feet for Pennsylvania Union is a player that wasn't originally on our roster. Trey 
number 26. That's a blank. So that's a mystery. That's a jersey change. And they didn't give us that number. So we will find out who 26 We're find is. Out who the John Doe was. They got the nice pick. That was we, a nice pick. And that ball was thrown with two receivers in basically Absolutely. the common area. Absolutely. That's not ideal. You right. don't want to have two receivers basically in the same spot. Well, the thing about it was, it was two Thunder players and one Pennsylvania Union player, and then the Union player pulled off the pick. Yeah, these guys be get hit hit up against these padded walls, and some uh, they can't take them blows, and they'll come down. So we're trying to get this padded wall taped up right quick. So Pennsylvania Union, thanks to the turnover, has the ball now at the Thunder 19. So now the Thunder offense has to talk things over. Absolutely. Because after that first series, everything would look hunky-dory except for one mistake. Now they've turned it over twice. Twice, absolutely. Low, flush out of the pocket, shovel pass. That's going to be incomplete as he was in the grasp. Donnell Bonds, number 61, lost a shoe on that play. Right. And, uh, but he got there. Jimmy, Jimmy Thompson also caused problems, and it, that, which allowed Donnell Bonds to kind of have that easy access to the QB and cause that disruption. Yeah, this is, an ex this is a very explosive and aggressive defense. Right. That we've, uh, that we've seen in camp, and now they're getting to show their stuff on, the, on opening night. Incomplete pass brings up a second down and 10. Dwayne Marshall in motion. Flushed again is low. Now eludes one defender. Then brought down by a couple of Thunder defenders. Fred Williams in that group making the stop number eight along with T.J. Warren. Short gain to the 17-yard line. So it's a pick up a three to bring up third down and seven. That's what made Captain Malone so dangerous. He's not afraid to tuck that thing and take off. He's not quick like a Vic or he's more, I get more like a, like a Russell Wilson type of uh, player when it comes to running the, f the football. He's able, when that pocket collapses, he's more dangerous when that pocket collapses. I get the feeling, though, that a lot of times because of this defensive pressure, he's not running for yardage. He's running for his life, really. <laughs> That's right. Second and seven, or third and seven, rather. Low flushed again. This time brought down. Wonderful piece of tackling there by Jimmy Thomas. You got in for the sack. That's a loss of two. That'll bring up a fourth. Actually, that's more than a loss. That's a loss of five. Right. I just called Jimmy Thomas. That'll bring Thomas a fourth down to 12. Absolutely. So Jimmy Thompson is going to get the plan like Charles Jefferson Award from Fast Times at Richmond High because he's playing like a madman. He may be foaming at the mouth. I don't know. I thought he just flew in for games. <laughs> Uh, we got our first fourth down, huh? Fourth and forever. Well, no, it's the second one. They had a short fourth oh, yeah, down, and they went for it. Yeah. Fourth and forever here, though. Fourth and it looks like 11. So a loss of four on that last play. In motion is Nixon. Low. Flushed. Rolling to his right. Player's helmets come off. Underneath, it's intercepted. Nice piece of defense there from T.J. Warren getting the pick. And... Maurice Green, he got Charlie Brown done that play. Got undressed, he lost a helmet, <laughs> lost a shoe. He's a wreck going back to the bench. Thunder with a takeaway. You know what, for it only being the first half of a play, it's been, what, three turnovers so far? Yeah. I that's something that's, I mean, you're good with, this is an offensive league. It's right. all about offense. Right. If you can play any kind of defense, you're going to be very successful in this league. Right. And we have two teams right now that have shown they can play a little bit of defense. I mean, Forget the forget the missed exchange on the first fumble. That's 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 a high snap on a running back who's not used to doing it. But the, you had a pick here. You had another pick there. I mean, these these two teams can play some defensive football. Absolutely. We're so we got a six-two game here. Two minutes thirty seconds to play in opening in the opening quarter, I should say. Here inside Bojangles Coliseum, this is Charlotte Thunder football. I'm Mike Salarte, joined by QCB. And I got a table full of notes here. Nice little fanfare out here. People enjoying themselves. Got a concession stand open. Man, Salarte got some ice cold water here. We, we good, man. Dance team out on the field. DJ's playing. It's a party out here, Mike. 
It is. And, you know, you talked about arena football earlier in the broadcast. You talked about arena football here and then gone, here and then gone, here and then gone. And and this franchise is hoping to eliminate all that. And you look at their ownership group, and that's where it starts. Right. It starts with guys like Thomas Davis and Ted Ginn Jr., Jeff Reed, Frank Garcia, Joe Moss, guys that are really rooted in the Charlotte community. Absolutely. Guys that love football. I mean, half the ownership group played it. Right. You know, at, at the highest level. Right. And more, more, level. four out of five. Right. You know, and then you got Joe, who's a, yeah. a business absolutely icon in the city. So you have all this support and all in, in, in this ownership group and guys that really believe in what they are trying to do. It's really a matter of the folks that are in the stands mm-hmm. and those folks that are listening to the stream to get behind this group. Now, granted, it's not the NFL. We all know that. Right. But they're not, the Thunder aren't trying to sell 70,000 tickets either. Right. This is a great night of family entertainment, fun to get out of the house, and you touched on it in the pregame. I mean, we've all been locked away from the world for over yeah. a year now. And, right. you know, as, we, as we're starting to slowly... And I emphasize slowly. We're getting there. Yeah. But we got to be patient. Not we got to be patient with it. Yet. It's, it's going to get there. We still got protocols we have to go by. And as we and as we go by those protocols, we can still have a little bit of our lives back. And that's, that's right. what tonight is kind of all about. All right, so here we go. Thunderball. Cologne deals it far side. Nice catch there by Trey Lancaster. Going to get it down to the Union 11-yard line. Now, that's not a big chunk play uh, that, that the Thunder like to go quickly with. Right. So I met, they're going to talk things over and, and call and play out of the huddle. Yeah. And Let Cologne will try to get them into the end zone on, the, on this drive. See what kind of two-minute offense they're running right now. Man in motion is Daniel Lee. Cologne looking, rolling to his right. Has a man on him, gets knocked down, ball comes loose. But the ball hit the wall before it was picked up by anybody. So I believe that's just a fumble out of bounds and not a change of possession. Right. Thank goodness it wasn't. And Cologne took a big hit as he leapt to try to avoid the defender. Had his legs cut out from under him and then lost the football. But the ball hit the wall first. So, therefore, it's an out-of-bounds fumble. Thunder retained possession. But it brings up a second down and what well, looks like 17. you got to protect the ball. Lee split left. Trey Lancaster in motion. As we hit a minute, about a minute to go here in quarter number one. Cologne fires, end zone, caught, touchdown! Trey Lancaster. We like to call that easy money. What a catch. Easy and I'll money. tell you what, Q, you, you got to have some guts to make a catch when you know you're going into the wall. Absolutely. Because you don't get to fall out of bounds. <laughs> no, you don't. And the wall's not moving. The thing about that pass, though, the way he just sat there and held it for a second. He he had him, he looked away, and then he threw it anyway, and he hit him right in the biscuit. And then, like you said, but for my man Lancaster to hold on and know the hit was coming, shows his toughness. On for the extra point try, Eric Amaya. You know, a lot of these players list collegiate experience. Amaya's experience goes back to A.L. Brown High School. Wow. Kannapolis. Okay. Lots of local guys. Yeah, around the, you know, lots of guys from, that played in and around the state of North Carolina on this roster. Extra yeah, point right. is up, and it is good. I think that's Ethan Horton's old high school, if I'm not mistaken. A.L. Brown, that's the that's, I think that's Ethan Horton's old high school. The green and white school, that's what yeah. I call it. Yeah, A.L. Brown. That's uh, the home of the fighting Mike Newsom. <laughs> right. Got the K's on the side of the helmet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> And Mike Newsom, longtime Mike coach at yeah. Butler, left Butler to go to Kannapolis to be an head coach of that, that program, and that's a storied football program wow. in high school sports. Especially in this area. So our scoreboard now is correct. I was looking up, and I, the reason I haven't told anybody the score is because it was wrong. Okay. <laughs> It was 6-2 to two right. before the touchdown. Touchdown is 6, so it made it 8-6. Thunder. The extra point went in, made it 9-6. But okay. the scoreboard said 13-6. So I thought I stepped into a time warp somewhere <laughs> and missed a couple of plays or something like that. But it is 9-6 after That's the touchdown. Next time that happens and, and, and we get the extra points, let's try not to send that to the end of the game. <laughs> I, 
I actually didn't say anything. I just kind of pointed into the scorer's box, and they oh, said, it out. Okay. and they said, hey, that's the score. Right. Okay. So Amaya set to kick off. Back deep, Jamie, uh, Jamie Nixon for the Thunder with 12 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Nixon from, what's that, Butte College? Butte. Butte. Butte College. Butte College. That is up and just shy of the uprights, so it fell between the boards and the crossbar, which means no point. I think you actually get a point if you actually do that. If you actually kick a field goal, if it goes through the upright on the kickoff, I yeah, think you, you actually get a point for that. Absolutely. But that is the end of the first quarter. 9-6 Thunder. Okay. After it took one. Them a while. It took them a while to get the offense going. They cut the turnovers out. They got some, a turnover, and they put some points on the board. I think what we're going to see, Q, is I think we're going to continue to see the offense for both teams find themselves. Right. So, really, it's this game is going to come down to which team can actually continue to play the defense, continue to get those takeaways. Absolutely. Because the takeaways are going to be vital here going the rest of the way. I mean, I mean, we already had four of them. Right. You know. And uh, in some weird way, you know, defense equates to good offense if you continue to get them stops because you push you in a good field position, you get that momentum. And you said uh, Butte College is in Montana, correct? Well, no, Butte is in Montana. Butte. <laughs> I mean, could you, where, is, where is Weber State? Do you know where Weber State is? I think it's in Washington, right? I, I think I just, I it just, could be. The only time I ever saw Weber State, I was in Seattle. And they ain't from Seattle. I think it's I think it's in Washington somewhere. I just know it's either Washington or Utah. I'm not sure which. Uh, Damian Lillard went there. That's all I know. No, and Harold the Show Arsenal okay. went to Weber State. Okay, he was and the guy I saw light up Carolina in Seattle in the NCAA tournament. Right, they had the upset. Thirty-six I, point there night. There we go. There the game that finished around three o'clock in the morning, morning in the yeah. East. <laughs> Second quarter. Here we go. Thunder now defending from right to left. Union over the middle of pass intercepted. And now still on his feet, T.J. Warren. No, that's not Warren. That is John Gibson, and he is in. Oh, he's not in. He's just short. Again, our broadcast position, we are right basically at field level. But T.J. Warren took that one back to the one-yard line. Mike, I, I think we, we may need to be head coaches or we're going to the uh, broadcast Hall of Fame because we're saying stuff that is happening. <laughs> we're just talking about how important defense, defense is. I just said defense equals. Good defense equals to good offense, and to translate to it, make it much easier. And my man, John Gibson, just took it to the house, who's also was a teammate of TJ when they went to the University of Missouri. Well, the takeaway for the Thunder now puts them right, I mean, you want to talk about red zone. This is the red zone right here. Cologne, the give, easy, walk okay. in, touchdown. Now it's final. For the Thunder, David Hamm. See the Thunder didn't try. You gotta to score. From, I mean, you gotta score from there. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't try. Don't try. When you get that close to the goal line, no need to try to get cute. Right. Do what works and get in the end zone, like we just seen. So Amaya on for the extra point. Ball will be placed at the ten. Hush over the crowd. Just painting the pictures, folks. Oh, it's a direct snap into the hands of David Ham, but a flag is down to the play. Now Ham got it into the end zone. And Coach Bryson liked that play call. They ran the direct snap instead of kicking. So we will get look, the call from, good to me. from referee Torian. They're talking it over. A lot of times it's a it's a a motion penalty, an illegal shift or something like that. We'll get the call here from from our official Torian. It's a false start on the defense, so the try is good. And as a result, we got a 15 to 6 game. Actually, I take that back. 17 to 6. They got a little too quiet in here. I thought I was at Augusta National and used for the sales of tradition like no other. But that's the respect. That's that's the football IQ of the home team to know when something's that close, you got to them guys concentrate so they can punch that thing in there and get six. 
So the Thunder in control now, 17-6, 13-10 to play in the second quarter here inside Bojangles Coliseum. Opening night for both teams. Thunder making their season debut, as are the Pennsylvania Union. Pennsylvania, of course, in the white jerseys, red pants. Thunder clad in black, head to toe, trimmed out in Panther blue. Absolutely. I think that's a Johnny Cash. They're showing tribute to Johnny Cash with the all-black on. <laughs> Well, we've, we've done that as well. Oh, yeah, we walk, though, in, a, we walk in a line. Exactly. Even though, <laughs> well played. That's good. I like that one. That was good. Amaya to kick it away. High end over end Give boot will be caught in the end zone. And now bringing it out of there and brought down is Jamie Nixon. He's going to be stopped at about the 7 or 8 yard line where Union will take over first and 10. But this has been a performance so far. By the Thunder defense. Absolutely. If I got to get a game ball, I got to get it to them because the Thunder, well, the defense has allowed the Thunder offense to score 15 straight points. So, you have, I, I, I'm going to piggyback on that, what you say, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the offense in the second quarter because uh, Coach Bryson told me pregame that Steph Cologne was going to get quarters one and three, and Jalen McClendon would be in at quarterback in quarters two and four, but first drive of that second quarter it was a short drive right they went right they went to they went to cologne to finish that one up i like what i've been saying for cologne so far he had that hiccup at the goal line on the pick but well that was that was off the hands of ham the goal line was off the was oh, a direct snap okay, to okay. ham okay that's oh that's right because cologne had the he did the little pump fake right and <laughs> a little bluff a little yeah. bluff move to think it was a bad snap <laughs> and union's thinking well that's that's what a bad snap looks like. So if it go, looks like if it goes over your head, as opposed to rolling it to your quarterback, right. which we've seen twice, twice tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. So you got to our hearts go out to Calvin Lowe, who struggled a little bit. Absolutely. With his center. Yeah. The Union in business, first and ten of the eight. Low flush, brought down quickly from the linebacker position. T.J. Warren again. Actually, Fred Williams, number eight. They were eight and nine, and they're always in on everything. So if we get a if we get a name wrong, we apologize <laughs> because it's one or the other. That's I think right. I'm just going to throw. I'm just going to call him Williams Warren. That way, I won't be wrong. I won't be wrong. Right, right. Yeah. Loss like, of one on that play. It's like when a Venus and Serena playing finals. A Williams Warren. Well, Williams Warren. You won't be wrong. You're not wrong. Second and eleven. Low out of the gun once again. Man in motion is Nixon. Ball comes loose, but Union able to pounce on it. Number sixty-six. Bill Billow. I don't know how long that walk is from Charlotte to Pennsylvania, but if if I'm the coach and I keep I can't even get the ball snapped to my quarterback, the center may have to walk back. I don't know. That's that's it's becoming redundant at this point. He may end up just being strapped to the bumper of the bus or <laughs> right. strapped Something. to the tail of the plane. I mean, however, I yeah. don't know how they got down here, but I don't. Maybe he rode like Aunt Adam did in National Lampoon's Vacation. I don't know. Third and a lot. Low. Looking downfield, under pressure, over the middle. Caught there by McCraw. Takes it to the wall, and he gets touched, which will stop play there. Making the tackle, number 23, Artie Holmes, who already has two points to his credit tonight after running back that blocked extra point for a defensive score. 10.35 and counting here in the second quarter. It's a first and ten for Pennsylvania Union after that last pickup. Low, pump fake. Now he's under duress. Big sack there, Fred Williams. They got so many guys on the defensive side of the ball for the Thunder that can make plays. And not just make plays, I'm talking about getting the backfield. Sacks, tackle for losses, quarterback pressures. It's unbelievable. And that was scheme right there because right. Williams was in the middle of the field at the start of that play hesitated and then took an outside path right and was untouched and you wow. can see the, from where I where we're sitting you can see that everything kind of flowing to the right and Williams coming around the left side and he just had poor Calvin Lowe all to himself right it was a great play big loss of yardage there let's call that a loss of about nine so to bring up second and 19 second and most of the field it's been <laughs> It's been second in a lot. Third it's, in a lot. It's been a second lot. in a bunch. Yeah, for the union. Low, far side, almost caught by Varney Dassin. 
Well, the ball was dropped incomplete, so it'll be third and long. If I'm the union, I'm taking more chances down the field. Like, that play wouldn't have got them in the way anyway because it was two defenders on them. So they they got to flip the, flip the other side of their playbook. Clark continues to tumble here. Not, nine minutes now to go in the second quarter. It's one of those things that you don't see much of. Uh, you don't see it all in the NFL, but the coaches being on the field and giving the instruction, and basically it's a one-on-one -on -one right with the quarterback to, to give him the play call. The one thing we are missing here is a play clock to know how much time is on a play clock. So that's, right. that's being kept by the officials. If they get close, I'm sure they give them a five-second count or something like that. But it's uh, third and about 19. Low, under pressure again, throws it, middle of the field, tipped, and it's going to fall incomplete. Pass intended for McCraw. And McCraw, forget about sleeper, Q. McCraw is not a sleeper. McCraw has been a very big part of this offense in the first half. Absolutely, absolutely. But Jimmy Thomas got off that ball so quick. He is definitely giving my man McCraw so much problems right now. All right, so fourth and a bunch. Thunder are going to drop Arnie Holmes deep into coverage to try to prevent anything from getting across the 20 because the line to gain is the 18-yard line in Thunder territory. So Dasson's going to split left from low. you got McCross slifted, uh, shifted right, and Dwayne Marshall will be the motion man on this fourth and 19 play. And we got a whistle and a flag and a delay of game. So 4th and 19 just became 4th and almost half the field, 24. <laughs> I like how you are uh, explaining that long field yardage. It's, it's perfect. 4th and a million. Right. <laughs> but if you I mean. It but, is. But the thing is, though, is that 4th and a million can be picked up like that in this game. That's the beauty, That's the beauty of the arena game. football. How, absolutely. There's the speed and the quickness yep. and everything that goes along with it. Yep. You can get four, You can get 25 yards in a play and still have a first down. Yep. That's the beauty of 8 on 8. It's it's always moving. It's always active. Thunder would like nothing more than to not see that <laughs> on this fourth down play. McCraw, the motion man. Low. Short. Knockdown. Big paw in the air. Looked like it was Donnell Bonds making the uh, defensive stop. So it's a turnover on downs. And the Thunder will get the ball in prime scoring position. I don't That's know. a huge stop by the defense. Absolutely. I don't know if Calvin Lowe's going one Mississippi, two Mississippi. He need to cut out the Mississippi and just and just throw the just throw the ball. But hey, man, I like how hungry this defense is for the Charlotte Thunder. And look, I don't think I don't think that he can get the third S in Mississippi <laughs> out before he's got pressure. <laughs> right. And that's on one Mississippi. Right. Like one misses, and he's got a guy in his face. He's on his back almost, absolutely. And look at the great position the defense put the offense in. They get them alley-oops all night. Yep. All night. All right, Jalen McClendon in at quarterback now. And so Coach Bryson is sticking to his plan of giving the quarterbacks even shots. Right. We'll have David Hamm at his disposal along with Trey Lancaster. The big fella, John Luke Childs. Coach told me before the game, he wanted to make sure who 97 was, what his real name was, because he only calls him Louisville. Well, that's, you know how all these guys got he these nicknames. But, 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 but he wanted to confirm what his name was. He, did, he wasn't 100% sure what his name <laughs> well, was because well, well, he well, always well, called him Louisville. <laughs> Coach didn't know. Coach called him Louisville. <laughs> Coach called him Louisville. That was it. Right, right. We got this guy here. We got that, you know. Yeah, I mean, he says, yeah, we got Conley that can play. We got Hill. We got Louisville. <laughs> and when I, he first told me that, I'm like, right. who's Louisville? Because <laughs> I don't see a Louisville on the roster. And then you look in the school. Oh, right. that's Louisville. Right, a whole city in That's awesome. Like Godzilla, a dominate name. Ball spotted at the Pennsylvania 8. McClendon out of the gun. Daniel Lee, the motion man. Give is to David Ham, who plunges his way ahead to about the 6. And he'll bring up a second down. And about, well, second and, second and goal. I want to see what the Thunder have figured in uh, quick slants. In the offensive repertoire. Let's try to check that out. 
Well, Trent Bostick is split to the right. And you got Lancaster split left. The motion man there is Lee. McClendon steps up, fires off the hands of Lancaster, incomplete. McClendon with a bullet. That was a bullet to that. was kind of looked like one of John Elway, Dan Marino bullets back in the day. Brings up a third down. Uh, that was a Trey Lancaster, I think. Union's Robert Seaborn the third defensive lineman had to hustle back to the bench. He looks like he's in a little bit of pain. So a substitution on defense for the Union on this third and third and goal play. McClendon under pressure steps up. Oh, he goes down. Got tripped up. It looks like he got tangled up in the feet of his own offensive lineman, Louisville, John Luke Childs. Right. So it's a loss of yardage. Ball will be at the 11. It'll bring him fourth down. So it's like we're going to have back-to-back possessions or fourth downs from each team. On the fourth down play, play clock is rolling. Game. We're looking to trot Eric Amaya out there for the field goal attempt. That offensive set did not produce much in the way of progress. Hey, you up 11, that's nothing wrong with trying to tack on three more. Absolutely. Kick will be spotted at the 18, so pretty basic stuff here for Amaya. Snap is down, kick is on the way, and it is why it is, oh, it's good. Tough angle here for us to see. I thought it was left, oh, yeah. but it is good and through the middle. So with 444 to play, the Thunder in control. I'm glad it was a while left. I thought it was going to have another Ray Finkel moment. <laughs> but the laces were out. <laughs> Man, I'm in Psychoville and Finkel's the mayor. So they have, they have scored now. Amaya's 18-yard field goal makes it 20-6. to Thunder with 440 to play in the first half. 18 on answer. And it's going 18 on answer. Yeah. Actually, it's 20 on answer. No, it was 6-2. to two. It was 6 nothing. Wow. No, it was 6 right. nothing. Then he, then he the two-point defensive touchdown. Abs, okay. It's 20 on answer right. points. Yeah. So, and I think that Coach Bryson while he's pleased that his team is up by 14 points, would be the first to admit that his team has not played very well. Right. I mean, they're, they're, they're not crisp. And, and it's to be expected in the first game. Yeah. But he'll be the harshest critic of this team. And it's cool to say, even if they score 20 straight, that, uh, like you said, they haven't played their best, and the score should be a lot worse than what it is. But, you know, but counting what's been going right. on with the turnovers and the sloppy play, they are very fortunate to be up 14. Amaya. Sends this one high end over end and off the reservation. So it'll come out and Pennsylvania Union on the touchback will take over for the first first and ten. Here inside Bojangles Coliseum. I'll tell you what. Maximum capacity for these games, as we told you earlier in the program, earlier in the broadcast, 1,225. That's a max you can get in here because of COVID restrictions. This is a good crowd. Absolutely. I mean, I was I was honestly expecting to see mostly people on the far side in the view of our cameras. But that's not the case. There are folks in the end zones. There are a lot of folks behind us. All sides that are open right now. Look at them dancing. Cause I mean, this is, this is wonderful to see. It was going to like the, the little crowd that could. And, <laughs> and, and they have. They, they have. have. And they're loud. And exactly. They, and they play. Yeah, absolutely. That's, a, that's the, the point I was going to make is that they're a good crowd and they're having fun. They're loud. This is a good night for the Thunder. No question. All right. First and 10. Ball at the 20. Ball comes loose. Another helmet's on the field. Low under pressure. Gets wrapped and dropped. Just shy of the line of scrimmage. T.J. Warren, number nine, making the stop. And... Somebody needs to have a conversation. Another with mistake. Pe- with Pennsylvania with the, Union's number 65. With the exchange. Maurice Green. He keeps losing his hat. They cannot get the snap right. And if I'm the Thunder, I'm, I'm on the coach. Guys, continue to go after their football. Just go after the football because they keep putting it on the ground. And I, it may be their first time playing. I don't know. But it, if I'm the Charlotte Thunder, I'm loving what I'm seeing. 
Yeah, the defense has been very active. They've been very aggressive. They've had a great nose for the football. That was a loss of a yard, second and 11. Low fires over the middle, deflected off the hands of Warren. And all he could do is put his own hands on his helmet saying, how did I drop that? Right. <laughs> it's like the Charlotte Thunder players are being in the right place at the right time. They're paying attention to the football, and they look in the quarterback's eyes and reading him, his shoulders and everything, and they're right there. They put, it's almost like the Luke Keekly sense. Because <laughs> Luke Keekly knew where the ball was at all times. Let's pour one out for Luke. We miss Luke. Oh, I know. Absolutely. Yeah, Luke. yeah. Love absolutely. Luke. Absolutely. Big fan of Luke Keekly for yeah. the player he, he is or was now that he's retired. But the person he is, too. Good guy. Third and 11. Low, short, out. Into the hands of Marshall, who gets pounded into the wall. Nice play from Carlo Thomas. The Johnson C. Smith Golden Bull. Okay. Okay. JCSU in the house. I mean, you look around this roster. I mean, you got Smith. You got North Carolina A&T. You got Charlotte. UNC Pembroke, <laughs> North Greenville. I, thought, I think that's South Carolina. Right, right, right. But you, Living, got, you got Livingstone, Devontae Adams, so 43 Kelly, yeah. on the D-line. Livingstone mascot makes it. It's a blue bear. I guess when they went to the mascot store, bear. they say, that's all the color, color bear you got? Okay, we'll take that blue one. We'll take the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's cool to see Kelly on the ties out here playing. That's Lots pretty cool. And that's just on the defense. Absolutely. All right, so we got 2.09 to play. We had a flag that, well, we had a, we had a penalty. And that's why Pennsylvania Union just picked up a first down. It seems like that's the only way they can move the football. It's getting hit by the refs. So, so Union, now at the 18, low under pressure, fires far side McCraw, gets taken into the wall. And they'll give him forward progress to the 14. As the clock continues to run, 150 to play in the second quarter. It's like Pennsylvania Union offense is so stagnant right now. They're having troubles doing everything. It's like almost Pop Warner-ish kind of. Nick's of the motion, man. Snap to low, looking, throws it over the middle. And it's going to be caught by Nixon, and they give him the touchdown. I think that's a generous call because I thought he caught that ball shy of the goal line and was definitely touched by the defense. But nonetheless, the official in the back of the end zone says that's six. And the thing about it was, Cavalo, I don't know what's going on with his, his passing, the spirals, but that was one of those Peyton Manning last year for the Denver Broncos type passes. And the fact that he caught it falling between two defenders, you got to give him kudos for uh, putting the ball right there. We have a timeout on the field. We have one minute to go. And as we sit now, 20 to 12, with an extra point coming from Pennsylvania Union. Union benefiting from a, a penalty behind the play that gave them field position across midfield at the 18. And then Calvin Lowe finding Jamie Nixon on an 18-yard touchdown toss. Absolutely. On a wobbly pass, but it got there. It got the job done, and they got six. And so Union will try for two. And right. I'm bringing the kicker out. Right after I criticized the offense for being pop one ish they go and score they go, a touchdown. They look, yeah, they look like world beaters. <laughs> Nixon again in motion. Now waved off by Coach Hobby. Sends it back the other way. Low. Throws it. Intercepted. On his way. Down the field, and that's going to be Artie Holmes again. Artie Holmes, have a night, young man. Easy money. We call that easy money. And what you didn't so see while you were singing to the house, my man got laid out on his back, and it was a little scuffle out there. But they well, I think Devontae straight. Adams came out and threw a yeah, wonderful to, uh, block right at the to, midfield to, strike. To Jason Evans, number 78, got laid out. And he was looking for the thunder guy to help him up. He said, I'm not helping you up, man. You play for the enemy. So that's Artie Holmes with 
four points tonight. Wow. Oh, yeah. Let's just remind everybody. Artie Holmes is the Thunder's safety. Right. <laughs> he may be the best offensive weapon so far on the team. So, not only does Union not convert again, they get scored on again, and they have to give up the football for the final minute because they've got to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. So, big swing in momentum here for the Thunder, very possible on this last possession of the second quarter. This may be getting ugly because this is a lot of good momentum to take in before the half with a minute to go in the, in the first yeah, half. If, so. they can get the, if they can get a touchdown here going into the locker room and make this a 17 or an 18-point advantage because they're up 10 now, 22 to 12, it's going to – and again, you're never really out of it in this game unless it's 40. Right. You know, 18 points, though, you're on your way to 40. It's going to give a lot of, lot of cause for the union coaching staff and the players going into the dressing room to talk things over. Absolutely. Adam Frank, right foots this one, curling left, and that is off the padding and out of play. That was a terrible kick. And Well, I think that's actually by design because that's not ruled to kick off out of bounds. That's kind of like a coffin corner punt. See, that's those are in the football rules, so there's no flag on that play. Well, that's, well I'm just waiting. It, it looked like originally the officials were going to spot it at the three where it hit the padding. But now they're talking about it. So maybe they're not quite sure. First game, first week. we got to get all the rules and the kinks out. Okay. So, so yeah. they're ruling it as a touchback. So, so the ball will come out to the 20 where the Thunder will take over I first and 10. took that chance. And when you think about it, if you kick it out of bounds. Right. You get, kick a touchback and you put them on the 20. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And almost Very cut field, the only 50 yards. That's exactly. So 30 yards a touchdown. That's one pass. Like all of them are one play, but you don't want to <laughs> give them a more of an advantage. Right. You don't want to give them a short one Absolutely. play. Absolutely. Well, McClendon back under center and out of the gun for the Thunder on what they and what could be the last possession of the half. Bostic, the man in motion. McClendon firing. He's got him in far side, and that is Daniel Lee, who's brought down right at the first down marker. Clock stops. 45 seconds to play in the second. Well, that's another uh, North Carolina school. Oh, so we only talked about the defense. Yeah. Well, with all the North Carolina like, ties. This is the offense. We haven't gotten there. Absolutely. Uh, Sean Lee. Daniel Lee out of Shaw University up there in Raleigh, North Carolina. Shaw Bears. Right. Regular color bears. Yeah, right. just bears. Right. Yeah, they're not blue. Right. McClendon firing again. That's knocked down. Wonderful wow. step up there. Charles wow. Dickerson, the fourth, stepped up, broke that pass up nicely. Good play. Good play. He, he's, he's a DB win. I'm a 21. You know who? who <laughs> I can leave it at that. But that can he a, dance? Right. <laughs> right. But can he dance? Right. You can wear the number all you want. But can you dance? Doesn't make you deal. Right. Can I you mean, dance? Come on. Oh, man. Got to be the money. Second and 10, 41 seconds to play now in the second quarter. McClendon watching Lee in motion. Fires over the middle. Great catch there made. Up top, number 11, Trey Lancaster climbing the skywire to bring it in. Clock stops at 36 seconds as they move the sticks. They're one of the best uh, football players you want to have your team as far as wide receiver goes. Someone who's not as scared to go across the middle, jump up with a back against the defense. He don't know where the hit's going to come from. And the steal breaking down, that was a great play. Good catch. First down now, just about the six-yard line. McClendon flushed, got some room, pump fake, trying to stretch it, and he does. Jalen McClendon, a touchdown for the Thunder. Easy money. Tell you what, that right there, that that looked eleven on eleven quarterback play from McClendon right there. This is a guy that has got has got great pedigree, was a star at West Mecklenburg High School before going to NC State, going to Baylor as a grad transfer, and then of course catching on with uh, both Baltimore and Washington in the NFL and 
free agent uh, stints. Yeah, you played the XFL game for L.A.? With the L.A. Wild. Well, tried to. COVID right. stopped that. But, right. But you could see the coaching and the reps all come into play for him on that run. He was reading the defense, reading his keys, reading his blocks, reading who was in front of him, how to get there, and he found his way into the end zone. Wonderful piece of work there. I think that's definitely one of the biggest advantages for an arena football team, especially like the Charlotte Thunder. You have a quarterback, and you just list all of what he had on his resume so far. And, man, to go to those D1 schools like that, two of them, get some NFL experience, XFL, he touched everything. Yeah. And he picked up a lot. Yep. I mean. And Coach Bryce has got to feel pretty good about having a guy like him. But right. remember, remember who started the game. Steph Cologne. Right, right. Guy out of Glenville State. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful arena player, at least in what we've seen in the first quarter. And this, this Thunder lead now at 29 to 12 with 27 seconds left in the half. I mean, McClendon. It's, it's been a good. It's been a productive quarter for the Thunder. Absolutely, there obviously are are blemishes, but overall, they've they've held. You know, every guy's got their hand on the rope. And they're all pulling in the same direction, and that's the main thing. Right. And go back to McClendon. McClendon, one of his head coaches is the coach of the Carolina Panthers right now, Matt Rule. So, yeah. you know, so he, he may be out here playing for another reason, and which is a good thing because he's want to get a good audition in. Exactly. <laughs> Eric Amaya. Kick this one away again. 27 seconds left in the first half with the Thunder in front, 29 to 12. Amaya bounces one just shy. It's going to end up into the hands of Alan Lemire on the run back. Amaya gets drifted after the play. I mean, look, it's nice you get a shot in on a kicker, but I mean, at the end of the day, you just got a shot in on the kicker. Right, right. Yeah. The- What'd you prove? You, yeah, you don't, you don't get the tough man award for doing that. Right. That's like me going right now to get a shot in at Jeff Reed. Yeah, but Jeff wasn't your average kicker. Right, Jeff was like a linebacker. Jeff was not your average kicker. Right. <laughs> oh, man. But I mean that in a very good right. way. Jeff hit me Jeff one, was, of, one of two see, Super Jeff Bowl was what again. all NFL kickers should be. Right. They should be guys that can do their job but can still have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, that's I what he did. I think Reader had a lot of fun. I mean, he won a couple rings, too, won so that didn't hurt. rings. You got, you, know, you know, you got that blink. Yeah. It's all right. Went to the White House, Oval Office. Yeah. Not the Capitol Building, the Oval no, Office. No, no. Okay. At least we, at least we know it. No, right. I'm, I'm kidding, Jeff. We're kidding. kidding, Jeff. Low. <laughs> Down the field. has got a man. Oh, but he overthrows McCraw. And we'll maybe see. that was good for McCraw's health because Artie Holmes had a beat on him. Oh, yeah. And that's what I'm talking about from Pennsylvania. That's what I want to see. He's stretching you, the field. You fit in a half, 17 seconds to go in the half. You know what? Take your shots downfield. Take your shots down for you. Down double digits and the Thunder House momentum. Don't be slacking. Let's go. Let's try to get something going here. I mean, I still want the Thunder to win, but I'm just. <laughs> You're breaking down I'm the game, man. It's all good. <laughs> people, people on the stream know. People okay. that are listening know. It's all good. <laughs> second and 10. 17 seconds to play. Second quarter. Thunder in front, 29 to 12. Galvin low out of the gun. Rolling left a little bit. Now dumps it off underneath. A little contact. A couple of defenders closed in on Dwayne Marshall. I'm really trying to figure out Calvin Lowe's throwing because I don't know. It, it, it looks weird. And I'm, th- I'm his, not talking his, about his Tim mechanics? Tebow, unorthodox. Like, I can't ex- I'm trying to explain it for the people who listen. Like, I'm really trying to figure out, like, how is he throwing the football? Because it's like he can't throw 5, 10 yards. Sometimes he'll throw a dart, and next time it... That like what's going on? He look on the darts. He looks like a quarterback. Yeah, but the visual that comes to mind is Lamar from Revenge of the Nerds <laughs> with that javelin. With the javelin <laughs> on that throw, that looked like Lamar. It was not an over the top right. throw. Shout out to Lambda Lamb. Lambda Lambda Lambda. Get it right. Oh, there we go. Another, Another little, bad snap. Yeah. Low manages to pick it up. Now he's flushed. Now running for his life. Gets tripped up just over the twenty as he's run down by T.J. Warren, but he gets it across the twenty. They're going to spot the ball at the 22-yard line. Timeout on the field with six seconds to go. So they're going to talk this over. you you got to figure this is the last play of the half. Absolutely. Unless they throw something short, Quick. maybe right in front of right. us, get, you know, get out of bounds before, you know, stop the clock at two seconds. But, again, this is arena football. You're not playing for field position and a field goal. 
you're playing for six. I'm, so they're going to try to draw something up to get him down in the last eight yards of the field. I'm getting my fastest guy. I'm going in motion. I'm hitting with that classic arena football post. That's like the one of the most popular plays in arena football, that post. So they got to try to get something to boil. So the coaches over there talking it up. They're breaking the huddle now. So let's see what Pennsylvania Union and uh, and I like what the Thunder's doing. They're not playing back. They're playing up on the line. So let's, let's see what's, what's going to happen. Well, it may come back to bite him, but I, I would not be surprised to see Artie Holmes and Carlo Thomas and John Gibson maybe cheat a little bit and start to drift on the snap count. Because Holmes is already backing up to the 14. He's still meandering backwards. Thomas in front of us, Gibson on the far side, and Thomas is on the 20. So they're playing a little triangle here, right. five-yard triangle in that defense. But again, don't be surprised if they start to slink back a little bit just prior to the snap. They try to figure things out. Fourth down as well. The down, the down marker never changed. Apologies for the silence, but sometimes we've got to listen to figure out what's going on. Absolutely. So it's a fourth and about eight. Six seconds to go in the half. Thunder up by 17. Calvin Lowe looking downfield. Now he's going to be brought down under a swarm of Thunder defenders, and that is the last play of the half. Number eight. Fred Williams getting in for the sack. And that just threw a big splash of cold water on everything. Urban Bryson thought he called a timeout with two seconds to play. And that's what he's looking at right now. He's having a conversation you see, with that's Carlos aggressive, Torian. Aggressiveness we're talking about. Look how aggressive the coach is. Want to get? He's already up. He wants the ball back. Yeah, absolutely. He wants the ball back with another shot. But I don't think he's going to get it. Pennsylvania Union is heading to the dressing room as are the Thunder, slowly. He's acting like Nick Saban. He's up 17 and he's P.O. He's not up 37. <laughs> so we are at the half. Thunder with their first possession of the second half. They're starting it off at their own 10. Coach Irvin Bryson has gone back to his quarterback rotation. Steph Cologne is under center. Man in motion is Bostic. He's got him down to field. A deep throw. Bostic got bumped. As the defensive back turned his back. And then just gave a little, a little nudge. That was a good no call. I'm not biased. That was a good no call. So the pass is incomplete. And he's getting the he's getting the encouragement from his coach there. I'm not sure how catchable that ball was, but the bump he was just the two men down the field. I like the aggressiveness of it though. Going after it on the first play. Let's yeah. go. Second and ten now. Cologne. Flush to his right, throwing it down again. This just off the mark. Missing the outstretched arms of his intended target, Daniel Lee. Going to bring him a third down to 10. So right at the gate, second half, Cologne's 0 for 2. And uh, he's, he's looking a little rusted right now. Well, the Thunder picked up a lot of momentum by scoring. It's like I don't want them to be conservative or come out playing sloppy. Like we were talking about how they need to clean things up yep. and they increase this lead because it is arena football and guys can catch up pretty quickly. Yeah, Thunder picked up some momentum, scoring nine straight points to close out the half. Wide snap, but Cologne's able to fall in. That pass complete to Lee. He got it across the 20. The line judge has the spot, and then it's going to be a first down for the Thunder. So big pickup at 10 yards for the Thunder on that toss. Great work by Lee to get it past the sticks. Yeah. 
So first and 10 now at the 20. Lancaster in motion. Give us to Ham down the right side. He's going to pick up eight or nine very tough yards. As he bounces off the wall, then has his helmet taken off his head by defensive backs. That's a nice, nice tough run by David Ham. Nice tough run by David Ham. And you got to uh, excuse me and my man Salarte, so we have some technical difficulties because we have headset issues. We can't. We got to yell a See, little. See, nobody bit. knew that the entire first half. <laughs> nobody knew that. You had to go run it. I just had to tell him, man. I just had to tell him. Um, Lancaster in motion to give his to Ham gets wrapped up by the Union defense. Short of the line of scrimmage, that'll be a loss of a yard. For Delcado, number forty-seven, in on the stop. And it brings up. I got to tell you, man, for arena football, having been in Charlotte in several years, for them to come back and hopefully they can pull this thing out, it would be a good statement to say, hey, guys, we're back. We're here to stay. Great ownership behind us. Absolutely. And community come out of support. Lancaster's in motion. Gave us to Ham on a short third down play, and Ham gets all of it and more. Ball comes out, though. Pounced on by Pennsylvania. And they are going to rule that as a fumble. So the Union get the recovery. Moses Ulysses. At least that's his number listed. Well, that's that sloppy football play we didn't want to see no more. So. Well, him picked up, the, picked up the first down. And you're never going to tell a guy to go down when he thinks he can keep going and pick up Absolutely. more yardage. I wasn't so, mad at that fact. He's got to protect the football. Yeah, got to wrap it but up. Sometimes have two that hands peanut on. punch will happen to you. Yep. You know, but that was a nice little read option play. Yeah. And you don't see too many read options in arena football. I like that. You don't that. see a whole lot of 11 on 11 concepts in this game. <laughs> you don't. I mean, it's, and that, you know, it's, it's true right. because you just, you have, I mean, it's 200, uh, the, the rake is 200 feet. Right. The width of the field is 85 feet. We have a false start on Pennsylvania. Well, at least that's what it looked like. Carlos Torian, our referee. I think I'm smelling another turnover cooking in the kitchen right here. They call that as an offside play on the Thunder. So that'll give Pennsylvania five free yards. And we're starting to get into some murky areas here. 10-28 to play in the third quarter. You don't, if you're Urban Bryson and the coaching staff, you do not want Union to start feeling good. You don't want them to start getting the confidence going because they start feeling good about themselves. That snowballs. And now you're dealing, if you're the Thunder, you're dealing with an opponent yep. that thinks they can do no wrong. And you don't want to see them get that kind of kind of flavor going. First down and five. Dixon in motion. Low stepping up. He's going to be dropped. Ball comes loose. And it's pounced on. And it, is it a turnover? No. The line judge is saying the ball was down. Yeah, I think it was down. So there is no fumble. But heck of a play by the defense. That's a sack. It's going to be a loss of about six yards. Making it second down. So they got back the penalty yardage and added some more going backwards. Second down about 13. Ball is placed at the four. to play here in the third. Dixon in motion, low out of the gun, short side, almost picked off. Nice break on the ball by the defensive back. Carlo Thomas, actually it wasn't Thomas. It's John Gibson, number five. Almost got in there. Actually, it was T.J. Warren. It was T.J. Warren, my bad. Oh, he was on that play, absolutely. I'm really worried about how long... Pennsylvania Union is going to keep my man low, low in the game because he's not looking like he can move the offense at all. They may have a little quarterback change from Mikael Clark coming up here pretty soon. Third down in a bundle. Low out of the gun. Out of, now he's in the end zone. Flush to his right. Looking across the middle. Has a man, but it's off the hands of Tony McCraw, so it falls incomplete. So to bring up a fourth down. The ball be spotted at the four, and they've got to get to the 16. So 
Yeah, that ball. So fourth and twelve. Yeah, the ball hit him in the worst possible place. Right His in hands. hands. Yeah. yeah, right in the hands. You never, never like to see that. So Union's got to get to the 16. Artie Holmes is stationed at the 17 to try to keep everything in front of him. The ball comes loose. Another bad exchange. Thunder football. The big fella. Donnell Bonds pouncing on it. Bad exchange. Bonds Johnny on the spot. Thunderball in the shadow of the goalpost. I just said about a minute ago I'm spending another turnover getting cooked in the kitchen. And look what kind of power it was. Turnover. Turnover, yeah. And that's been in they side the whole game. Pennsylvania, they cannot get the The easiest thing you would think in football with a quarterback and a center is the exchange. We can't do nothing if, we, if I can't get the ball from my center. And that's, a, you know, and, and really, that's been a problem. You know, we've, we've talked about it at length in this game. It's a problem. It's been a problem tonight for Pennsylvania. You Unbelievable. Three of those yes. bad exchanges. That one was a direct result in a turnover. And at the end of that play, cornerback Calvin Lowe, just kind of threw his hands up like what in the world right i mean what do i got to do right so you know and they're and that's the thing union they started to feel good about themselves because again they're only down 17 741 to play in the third quarter they're right in this and that's nothing in arena football so to make this game even more interesting for the union squad i think the coach have to really have a talk with these guys and get on them but if he can't find someone who can accept if he can't continue to do the job you need to get someone who can to kind of make them guys compete because they're kicking themselves in the foot, by, I mean the butt, by um, not being able to exchange the football. Yeah, so head coach Dominic Hobby talking with these guys. And Dominic Hobby is an interesting story, by the way, because not only is he the head coach of this football team, but Hobby is going to be taking his talents to the D.C. area as a quarterback for the Tri-City Rush later this year. He's going to be playing <laughs> arena football wow. later this year. The red shirt got his back to us, and he's getting into his guys right now. In fact, he might be talking to your guys saying you might have to walk back to Pennsylvania. Right, right, right. I mean, that's more an indictment on him, though. Solarte, if, if if he's a quarterback, and his quarterback, they can't get the exchange for the... Oh, he's not talking to the quarterback. He's talking to the lineman. He's getting after your guy, saying you might have to walk back to Pennsylvania. Right, 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 right. So maybe he heard, he heard me. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm sure he did. We carry. We project him. <laughs> There's a lot of people, but we are, you know, we got a direct right. line. Right, right, right. Right in there. All right, so it is a short, short field for the Thunder. Ball is at the three, Pennsylvania Union. Steph Colon's got a man in motion. That's Bostic. He's just going to pick up and block a man. David Ham drops the hammer. Carries it across the goal line, and that is another touchdown for the Charlotte Thunder. That is the kind of running that Coach Bryson wants to see out of David Hand. Absolutely. It wasn't trying to be cute. We weren't playing mad with the Xbox circle button and all that. That was straight up. I'm running down your throat and getting the end zone and make a save, and he did. And again, Ham is a guy that spent some time in camp with the Raiders. So he's got some. He's gotten a taste of the NFL, just in terms of training and practicing and that sort of thing. And that's what you was talking about earlier with the game plan, with the Thunder, what the coach told you about how they was going to run. They're run. run yeah. they're, they're a run heavy team. Very run heavy team. So Amaya's extra point, right down the middle. Thirty. Do my math here. Thirty-six to twelve. <laughs> Thunder in front. As we've got 6.45 to play in the third quarter inside the Bojangles Coliseum. It has been, it has been a, a night for the Thunder to really enjoy because they're getting contributions on both sides of the football. The defense has played very well. The offense has played very well. And I say that while also acknowledging that they could be playing even better. There right. have been, there, this has not been the cleanest of football. There are mistakes here because, again, it's the first game. You look at this team, say, in a month, they won't resemble what we see tonight. They'll be a lot better. Right. And when we were talking to the coach before the first game today, when we were talking to him earlier this week in practice, he was saying, you know, they got the type of team that can score 100 points, 80 to 100 points. So the score very well could be 56 
to 12, 12 versus yeah. 36 to 12. So, but you know what? I'd rather be in this position with the Thunder than the Union any day of the week right now. With with the messy football yeah. play. Oh, absolutely. No. <laughs> while, while there have been some mistakes, it has been entertaining to say the least. Oh. Alan Lanier back to receive this kick. He carries it, catches it rather, at the wall, brings it out of the end zone, trying to find some room up the far sideline where he's knocked down about the eight. And we have a Thunder player on the turf. I think that is Carlo Thomas, number one. Didn't get to see how he ended up in, in such a position here. Two trainers are out there taking a look at him right now. Hope, we'll just obviously hope that he's okay, but uh, we are at the 638 mark of quarter number three with the Charlotte Thunder in front 36 to 12 over Pennsylvania Union. All right, Thomas is sitting up now. And he's a guy, Q, that uh, the Thunder just do, th Thunder do not want to lose. Right. They play with such intensity, they play a hard nose. And that's what you're supposed to do. And they're trying to make a statement. We want the top tier teams in this league. And they got to, they want to take over the league and dominate the league. And their defense, I definitely said that. And the offense haven't been far behind. Right. Good news on Carlo Thomas is that he walked to the bench on his own power, no one carrying him. So that's a good sign. Absolutely. We'll see if he returns to the game. And a change at quarterback for Union. Kale Clark from Hocking College. Now in a quarterback. That looked to be offside. The first, first offering from Clark is in the dirt. Looked like Dwayne Marshall may have gotten ahead of the snap. There was no flag in the play, but the pass was incomplete, so it'll be second and ten. But Mikhail Clark, 5'11", 190, coming, in on, coming on in relief of Calvin Lowe. Which I just alluded to. Oh, yeah, you saw wow. it coming. Wow. Because it wasn't happening. So, long time, I think we, I mean. I'm going to follow. Look, I'm, just give me the winning lottery number before we get out of here tonight. <laughs> and I'll be really, really happy. <laughs> you, you, have, you have nailed it on a couple of occasions tonight. You have been That's Mr. Hocking College at quarterback right now, right? Mr. Hocking College. A little shift in the backfield. Bill Billow. Now pass. Oh, off the hands and then met quickly by John Gibson. That pass to Varney Dasson off his hands and down. So it's incomplete. Third and ten. Union ball. As they continue to stall at their own nine-yard line. Mr. Varney Dasson here at footsteps. Well, in, in warm-ups, Varney Dasson looked like he could beat the world. Right. He might be the best practice player in the world. Right. Because he's had a couple of opportunities tonight and has not. They've gone his way. Right. You know, they've looked at him. They've given him some targets, but he has not come through. The way that he looked in, in warm-ups. In warm-ups, he was flying all over the field. He didn't drop a thing. Them lights come so, on, boys. Well, yeah, the lights came on. He, might, he forgot his sunglasses, I think. <laughs> to you know, keep the light up. <laughs> McCraw in motion. Mikhail Clark now to Dasson. He makes the catch. Going to be brought down at about the 13-yard line. A little chuck after the play. As Jimmy Thomas took a shot from Maurice Green. One of those things that when you get a game that's... You know, you got yourself a 24-point advantage. That's might be time for the third team on the field to keep their eyes peeled because you're going to see some stuff. Right. That's going to be a little bit late, a little questionable. All right, so can the Thunder get a stop on downs or a takeaway? Line to gain. Appears to be just shy of the 20. So we're going to call this about a fourth and six, six and a half. Man in motion is Marshall. Clark, pump fake, going to be brought down from behind. Big time play there made by number 43, Devontae Adams for the sack. Turnover on downs, and again, another short field for the Thunder offense in this third quarter. They are smothering Pennsylvania like some hash browns at the Waffle House. I get mine covered. I don't do the smother. I get them covered. 
for you up This was smothered. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's smothered. You call it covered all you want, but that's smothered. That's smothered. Oh, man. I mean, you got people dancing. They're having a good time out here, man. You got people out here dancing, having a good time out here. And they're watching. They're, I said it before. I'll say it again. This is entertaining. If you're not out here, you're missing a good time. First and goal for the Thunder. The ball placed at the Union three and a half, we'll call it. It's Tef Cologne out of the gun. Got David Ham with him. Fake. Quick hit, Trent Bostic, and that's another touchdown for the Thunder as Cologne is doing his happy dance at the 15. That's a quick strike offense right there. That's what you're supposed to do when you got it that close to pay dirt. You got to make the quick play. You got to get it in quickly because all you're going to do right there is throw the stunner Absolutely. on your opponent. That's right. That's right. Continue to put them points on the board. Great play. Like I said, they weren't trying to get cute at the goal line. Let's get it in there. Get these points. You're going to be cute in your dance celebration. But, and that was uh, a pretty good one at the 15. Oh, that, yeah, that I don't know if nice. you saw that or not. I've seen them. And that's nice. And shout out to UNC Charlotte, man. Mr. Bossy got, a, got an end zone. It's pretty good. It's been a good night for a lot of the Carolina Connection. Oh, yeah. Eric Amaya. And now we have a flag. A little delay a game. So Amaya is going to have to go back five yards. And they'll spot the snap at the 15 on the extra point try. Of course, extra points, as we've seen tonight, have been no walk in the park. Pennsylvania <laughs> right. had two extra point attempts tonight. That's, they've got two touchdowns. But on both extra point attempts, the first was an attempted field goal or attempted kick. That was blocked. It was a scoop and score for two mm -hmm. for Artie Holmes. They went for two after their second touchdown, and Artie Holmes picked that off and took it the length of the field for another extra point defensive score. So he's got four points on the night. But Amaya kicks this one all the way up into section 101, and it's good. So tack on seven more, and it's 43-12. to 12. Charlotte Thunder, 222 to play, quarter number three. Glad you're joining us, whether you're checking us out on the WCCB stream, whether you're checking us out on the uh, Charlotte Thunder Facebook page, wherever you are in this great land of ours. Welcome inside the Bojangles Coliseum. That's right. Place has been quiet for a long time. But I'm talking about the building, not, not the crowd here. <laughs> the building has been quiet for a long time due to COVID. Right. Charlotte Checkers call this building home. They've not played since last season, and they did not, they were not a part of the American Hockey League this season. They opted out. They are a new affiliate of the Florida Panthers. So this building is theirs. Now they haven't been in it in over a year. The most recent event that I knew of that came in was a women's NIT tournament, mm -hmm. where Charlotte 49ers played here against Florida and uh, eight teams that were in town uh, for that. So it's good that events are starting to come back. Again, it's it's a process. We're going to get there. We got to we got to continue to do the things that we've been doing, you know. And and I'm look, I'm thrilled to be sitting here, basically ringside of a football game, right? You know, and getting the opportunity to to give you the pictures, descriptions, and accounts alongside Q here, and seeing all these fans in the building. Right. It starts to feel like we're getting there. Amaya, the kick. Dropped in the end zone by McCraw. McCraw actually, that's not McCraw. That's Alan Lemire. He gets it across the five-yard line. I wonder if Coach Hobby's going to tell him, you know, just let the thing go out of bounds. Just let it go through the end zone. Because they're getting nowhere when it comes to receiving the kickoff. They can't even. They have a. We talking about the Thunder being messy. I mean, that's an understatement compared to what's going on with the Union. Yeah. And, and, and go back to what you said about this building. And we all know how historic this place is. I mean, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, for, I used to come here and watch wrestling matches. I mean, it, over there under the twenty on the cement, it's like Ric Flair's blood is still over there. For him and they, they marked it off. They put some glass over. Oh it. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Dusty Roads, all elbow pad. This is crazy. Didn't man. Elvis play this building? Huh? Didn't Elvis play this? Yeah, building? Absolutely. the King was here. Yeah. We ain't talking about LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't play here, though. He just watched. Nah, absolutely. Mikhail Clark, sack. Oh, oh, he just dove across the goal line to avoid the safety. But, again, this is this is what we've seen from this Thunder defense. It has been constant pressure, constant pressure. Defensive coaches over there applauding with the other guys on the bench, and they couldn't be happy. 
because it, these practices, you, you know, we've been out to, to see these guys work out. They're spirited. The defense is getting after the offense. The offense is trying to get after the defense. There's chirping. There's chatter. There's all kinds of stuff going on. And in the end, you know, when when the practice is over and they all huddle up, they're one big family. Right. So, But they all know that when they're in between the lines, it's time to go to work. And they, they work hard, as proof tonight. Over the middle, Mikhail Clark. That pass just through the hands of Dwayne Marshall. Good look right at us. But Marshall, that, that's a catch you got to make. Absolutely. Absolutely. If you're trying to get anything offensively, if you're the union, it's some kind of plays you got to make right there. Because now, with it being 30 seconds away from the fourth quarter, the mistakes has to be minimal. You're down, you're down 31. You almost got to play flawless football yeah. on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you got to make the plays that are at, you know, there, there's a play to be made on every play. So yeah. be the guy to make it. And Union has not had that guy step up just yet. Clark out of the end zone, drops the snap, and he's going to be sacked in the end zone. That's going to be a safety for the Charlotte Thunder. Give the credit to the safety to number 94, Raleigh White. Six foot four, 270 out of South wow. Alabama. Wow. He tacks out another deuce just before the third quarter expires. Another snap issue for the now, Pennsylvania Union. Now, now that one, though, that one was on the quarterback. That's on the quarterback. That one was on quarterback. Okay. So they, they take it turns. The quarterback in the center. They're That's on you. They're sharing the, the first, well. Yeah, the first five on you, the last two been on me. <laughs> so as we head to the fourth quarter, the Charlotte Thunder have a stranglehold on this one. Up 45 to 12, 15 minutes of football to play here inside Bojangles Coliseum. It's been fun. These fans that are in attendance, and I got to tell you, I mean, I'm looking around right now, and we are seeing, I mean, there are fans in just about every section. And, they're, of course, they're distanced. And so when you factor all that in, you still have a lot of people in this building, which right. is awesome. And I, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that we're at the point where we can have fans of games. I know the ownership group is. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but, and you know, I, and I just, think, from, just from a, a, a state of normalcy, just to see fans at sporting events again, it does my heart good. I know that, you know, you've gotten a shot. You got your shot? You got no, vaccine? I'm getting my next month. You're getting your next uh, month. It's already scheduled. Yep. you scheduled for next month? Yeah. I've gotten one. Okay. My second one's coming up. And I'm I'm so stoked that more and more people are doing that. Right, because. This is, and, and, you know, I, I know and there's going to be folks that are listening. And, oh, why are you guys talking about this kind of thing? It's about all of us. I mean, that's, that's the thing. We're here watching an American Arena football game. We're able to do that now. Because a year ago at this time. Everybody was getting scared out of the building. Right. You couldn't go to anything. You know, there was nothing to go to. Right, and the thing so about maybe that's it why is, I'm waxing a little nostalgic here about just being anywhere watching a game. So. Right, and the thing about the the, the the shot is, I'm glad every time I see the news and there's a vaccine shot, it shows shots so of people. The lines be long, yeah, long, long car lines, long people standing in line because a lot of people kind of scare themselves from taking it and they get paranoid they Facebook this and they yeah. they say I said listen man we trying to, I don't like keep wearing this mask I'm ready to get back to work so let's take the shot the numbers are going down right. we got a long way to go like you said yep. and let's just take the shot and we'll it'll be all it'll be all better place if exactly. we continue to do that about to start the fourth quarter Adam Frank gonna kick this one away And that sails over the fence for a home run. Okay. Artie Holmes was back to return that, and he just watched that one sail over the wall. Right. So, Thunder will get the football to start the fourth quarter. The I'll good thing back about this game, go if they're going to get their first win and the fashion they're getting it in, that word of mouth is going to help out for the next home game's attendance. Yeah. And it's gonna, I, I got a feeling it's going to get bigger well, and larger. It's going to grow. And that's the thing, too, Q, is that, you know, the, the fans that are here tonight will go back and tell their friends, yeah, it was fun, you should come out next time. Right, right. But the fans that are listening to us right now should also 
be motivated for this right. because this is this is a fun night. Absolutely. You know, it really is. It's a fun night. These guys are playing their guts out. They're really trying out here, and it's been fun to watch. McClendon. Oh, picked off through that right into the hands of Josh Donaldson. Donaldson at the 15, going to get hit at the 17, and falls at the 18, but Jalen McClendon had a man streaking, but Donaldson just made a nice break on the football, stepped in front of it, and there's a turnover. So Pennsylvania now has the ball at their own 19 going the other way. That was a good play. Like we said, for them guys to get something going, I, I, even though it's 14 minutes and 20 seconds to go, 27 seconds to go in the game, and they're down 33, it's not over by a long shot. Oh, no. Because we so, saw how quickly, I mean, we've seen how quickly the, the Thunder were scoring points right. after fourth down conversion or, you know, turnover on downs, bang. Take away, yeah. bang. So it can happen in the blink of an eye. So, so it has to start now. It, it, for the th- for the union, it has to yes. start right now. Yes. yes. Mikhail Clark in at quarterback. Let's see if they can get the ball to the quarterback. Tony McCraw. Near side. It looked like Marshall jumped the line of scrimmage. Clark going down to Marshall, but he throws that one and hits Carlo Thomas in the head. <laughs> And Carlo Thomas, right? I'm sorry, it wasn't Carlo Thomas. That was Steph Cologne, who's <laughs> off the field of play, behind the wall, and was just having a conversation, I guess. <laughs> I think the football guy hurt worse than his head did. So at the end of the day, it's an incomplete pass. <laughs> <laughs> Not so top ten play. So we got a second and ten now at the 19. So it's one of the nuances of this game, too. When you see the player in motion heading to the line of scrimmage, it's all about timing to make sure that you get the snap off before that player gets to the line. Yeah, because as such. It might allow for some grace there as well, but you've got Dwayne Marshall in motion again. And they got that one tied, but a poor snap. Clark fumbles. Ball is loose. Thunder have it on his feet. Going the other way. That is John Kerr or Jimmy Thomas. And Jimmy Thomas score. So long time. First of all, that's called, we call that easy money. I had never seen that like this in a long, long time. I don't know when last time I've seen it. When a, the center can't get the ball to the quarterback. A poor exchange. Mikael Clark trying to do something with it and got just lit up, which jarred the ball loose. And Jimmy Thomas picked it up at about the 20 and then darted to the far side where on an outdoor field would be the pylon, made his way to the wall and was able to get it across the line for the touchdown. Well, that's what I like about the Thunder's defense. They don't want to just settle because he was on the ground untouched. He could have stayed there in cradle and got touched, and the ball, the play would have been over. But he got up, and he had uh, the know-all to take this to the house, and he did. Extra point from Amaya. And there we got a flag for delay game. So we got a... Something to be worked on in practice this week is that 25 <laughs> second play clock. Right. I got to say, the field looks pretty good, man. When we talk about this earlier uh, in the pregame, how yes. the players see this little brotherhood activity and they put this field together themselves and it hadn't been an issue. I hadn't seen that in those scenes pop up. It looks pretty good. The biggest issue we've had tonight with the playing surface is the pads coming off the wall occasionally. Right. Amaya's kick is up, and that is going to be ruled good just over the left upright. And so that gives the Thunder seven more to make it 52 to 12. It is now officially a 50-burger. You got a couple of union players arguing with the ref about the extra point not being good. There's, 30, there's 39 other points they got to make up instead of that one. So yeah, I, I, mean, I, I wouldn't focus matter. on that one. Yeah. Take you behind down there and stop somebody. <laughs> you're down half a hundred. So if you're watching the game tonight with us on the Facebook stream or the WCCB stream, we thank you for your company. And this reminder, if you would like to be a part of the action, you'll be out here with these fans that are enjoying this game tonight. Head over to charlottethunder.com. You can get your tickets there. You can get your merchandise there. You can find out more about the ownership group, 
charlottethunder.com for all of your merchandise, your ticket needs, everything you need to know. Absolutely. Just a simple mouse click away. And of course, you got the <laughs> ticket master where you got to go to buy the tickets. So. <laughs> well, you know. That's it. We're just surfing the internet. The, you know, the surfing the internet. That's the internet's a good thing. Taking a drive on the information superhighway. <laughs> Throw out all the cheesy right. internet lingo from the '90s for you guys. It's a, it's a little little time capsule. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Mad Max from '90s as well. Yeah, yeah it's a Thunderdome. Amaya's kick is up, and that is off the upright, and in play. So, again, is this okay? That does not. That is not off the net. Okay, so it hit the upright. It hit the if crossbar. It crossbar, but it would have went bounced, back. It bounced back into the field of play. That's points. It bounced forward, so there's no points because it did not hit the net. Okay. Had it hit the netting, they would have gotten one, I believe. We haven't seen it yet, so right. we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll know for sure when it happens. Nonetheless, Union's got the football at the 20, where they will try it again. But this Thunder defense has not given them much of a sniff tonight at all. So, Mikhail Clark... Out of the gun, Dwayne Marshall is the motion man. Snap was wide of Clark. He had to adjust and throws across the middle. Big catch and then a big hit. Jamie Nixon brought it in, and he was cleaned up by Artie, Artie Holmes. But it's a first down for Union. One of their first positive plays in quite a while. 10-13 and counting in the fourth quarter. Well, if you, if you got a first down and you're Nixon, you're the Union, and you're down 50, Getting up, doing the first down signal, that doesn't match. <laughs> it don't match. But, but you know what? These guys are trying to find a way to fire themselves up, too. Right. Because so, somebody walking back to Pennsylvania. Yeah, again, I still think it's the center. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. That was your call earlier. <laughs> Barney Dasson, the man in motion now. Mikhail Clark, keeper, gets wrapped up by one man, but finally is brought down by two others. Tough run. Somebody lost a shoe on the play. It's credit Emmanuel Phillips. Donnell Bonds on the initial contact. And again, shoes coming off. Right. Uh, like you said. So second down now. Again, give him about four yards on that play. So it'll be a second and six for Union with the ball at the 13. Out of the gun, another wide snap. Clark under pressure, stepping up. It's going to be brought down. That's going to be a sack for Jimmy Thomas. Number 56 getting in there. And we've lost count of the number of Jimmy Thomas sacks, but before the game, Coach Bryson predicted four or five sacks from Jimmy Thomas. He's the captain of his defense, and he's played like it tonight. I definitely think he's in the, uh, the neighborhood of four he's in the five sacks. Yeah. Absolutely. There are so many storylines in this game that we that unfortunately we're going to run out of game to tell them all. I mean, I really want to dive back in on this turf story because you talk about how good it looks, and these guys, these players, are the ones that put it together. I mean, that's the thing. Got a flag in the play. Clark throwing out of bounds. Almost brought back. Now is that a catch? That is going to be a catch. That's like he took a home run away in baseball. <laughs> Artie Holmes. There was a flag on the play, and it looks like it was going to be on the offense because they, they had a stop and start play. We got Calvin Lowe now running as a receiver, and Lowe came in motion, stopped at the line, and then he went back in. But once the ball was snapped, it looked like there might have been a hole in the interior and that's when the flag came in, but you also have a flag on the far side of the field as well. So we got lots of laundry. And we have a conference taking place at the 22 and a half yard line. Of course, Carlos Torian, tonight's referee, will. That's a hard play to dissect. You did a pretty good job. Well, then you had the 
then you had the center fielder out there right. taking it off the <laughs> taking it off the off the wall, yeah, making yeah. the interception. And what, what, what I like about what's going on right now, you know, the Thunder 58 minutes ago in the game, man, it's like fatigue hadn't set in. They playing like a zero zero. Oh yeah, that's a very good point. They, they are they are fresh. They are engaged. They are they are all about this one tonight. It, it's been a very good very good performance by the Thunder. All right, so looks like we have offsetting penalties. So Union's going to get the ball back and another shot at it on third down. Right. So Mikhail Clark is in a quarterback. Tony McCross split left. Marshall will be the motion man. And it looks like they got low. Yeah, low is split out to the right. Clark fires over the middle. Going to be caught. Nice piece of handwork by Marshall. But that is shy of the first down, so it'll be spotted at the 10. And it brings up a fourth and manageable. Something I have not said about said, Union today. You say that all day. Yeah, we're in the fourth quarter with 7.37 to go. That's the first time they've had a, a, a relatively, a relatively easy position yeah. for Pennsylvania. A relatively <laughs> easy fourth down conversion. And I say relatively because they still got to get four yards. Marshall, the motion man, hop steps and goes. Clark, flush, throws it to the back of the end zone. Picked off! Thunder football! Artie Holmes doing it again. Have a night, young man. I mean, really. This is crazy. This is crazy. End zone interception. The ball comes out at the 20. It's a 40 point advantage. For the Charlotte Thunder, they lead 52 to 12 with 7:16 to go in the ballgame. I don't know how many turnovers Pennsylvania Union has tonight, but it has to be around six, I assume. I've lost count. <laughs> I, I mean, I, you know, we don't. There, there are things that we don't have at our disposal right. at this time. We don't right. have statisticians. You know, we're keeping our own notes as we're going. Absolutely. We're doing the best we can. But this game has seen a lot of change of possession, and a lot of it's gone white turning the ball over to black. Right. Like, you know? if it was a possession arrow, like, the, the, the light bulb would have went out. Worked. Right, right. That, that, that device would actually be smoking at this point. It would just be smoldering. <laughs> yeah. It's been all thunder in this second half. Oh, man. The, uh, the Pennsylvania has not, the uh, Union have not scored since the middle portion of the second quarter. But the Thunder have, uh, well, what's it now? It's a, it was a 20 to nothing run to that point, and it's been 30, 30 to nothing since. Yep. So this has been a thorough, thorough performance by the Charlotte Thunder tonight. Yeah, this is what we call taking behind the woodshed, <laughs> filling the blank. They've, they've not they've they've not been crisp, but they've not made a lot of mistakes. Right, and that I think is the key. The Union has made a ton of mistakes tonight. Bad snaps, bad exchanges. Each team has turned the football over. Union more so, but mistake huge mistakes. They've really stayed away from the Thunder tonight. Well, the thing about the Union mistakes is they're mistakes that that shouldn't happen. They're self inflicted. Absolutely, Plaxico Burris. Yeah, shoot them. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, too soon. Huh? Too soon? No, 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 okay. no. 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 <laughs> Jalen McClendon in the quarterback. His last pass was picked off, so he's looking to improve on that. This will work. Near side, caught there by Daniel Lee, cutting across the field. He's going to be taken down almost hog tied, and now we've got a flag coming in for the high tackle from so Alan Lemire, uh, zero on his uh, uniform. That is probably going to be a personal foul. Daniel Lee, like we said, representing Shaw Bears up there in Raleigh. You see our referee, Carlos Torian, talking it over. And here comes the signal. The personal foul. It's a face mask, not a high tackle. So that's going to tack on some additional yardage. The Thunder getting the football now at the Union 23. And McClendon wants the guys to huddle up, talk things over, make sure they get it right. 
Got to shout out this offensive line. They've done a nice job. This, this trio has done a nice job of protecting both McClendon and Cologne tonight. Absolutely. They're making it look easy out there. They have. They really have. Give is to Ham going left side. 15 slides down just beyond the first down marker. I got some chirping going on. There's some big guys out there at that O-line, too. It's good you uh, shouting them out because the offensive line, is we know how important it is. So, And they're giving McClendon them guys time to sit back in the pocket and do the check downs and yeah. go through their progression. Even though they're doing it fast, that, they still get the time to do that. Well, they've so been running the, the show. Those offensive Absolutely. lines done a really nice job running the show tonight. Lancaster in motion. The give is to Ham, who gets a couple of yards across the 10. Going to bring up a second down. About, uh, we'll call that eight. Clock continues to wind. 5.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. McClendon got bunch set to the left with Deontay Pederusso. Lancaster, Trey Lancaster and Lancaster, the man in motion. Quick out to Daniel Lee. Got a man in front of him. Going to get it to, say, about the seven before he's driven out of bounds by Alan Lemire. And so if this continues on this path, I would not be surprised if the Thunder, well, I will be surprised, I should say, if the Thunder slow things down, just let the clock bleed out. Right. You know, run, you know, run a play, because, you know, the play clock now is 30 seconds to go, and it's 4.33 on the clock, the game clock. So, I mean, the Thunder can get a first down and really just bleed this thing out. But they're not going to slow down. They're going to try to score. Absolutely. Trey Lancaster in motion. McClendon getting the snap. The give is to Ham. Ham is in for the touchdown. Ham goes in for 12. Actually, check that. He goes in from seven. And the Thunder approaching 60. Well, I, I like the way the play call has been going with the Thunder, what Coach B's doing. And McClendon has such an advantage. I mean, he's 6'4". He sees over everybody. He looked like a point guard out and there. That, you know, that is that. You talk about a read option there? Yeah. I mean, there's there's the potential for McClendon to keep that and go back and do something else with it. Right. As Amaya knocks it through, and it is now 59-12. to 12, Thunder in front. Uh, but that is, that's something, again, that's not a new, that's a nuance from 11-on-11 11 11 that you wouldn't think you would see in this game. You don't see it in arena, you know, in arena football. football. Absolutely. I've been watching arena football for a while as... Has have you, and I, I don't see read options like, you know, it's not part of the offense. Right. But when you've got a horse like McClendon, you got a talent like that, you got a talent like Colon and David Ham, you can you can throw it in there and mix it throw up. That, you absolutely. can absolutely throw that in there. Yeah. Make life tough like they have all night for Pennsylvania Union. Well, Calvin Lowe is lined up right in front of us here at the 20. He struggled playing quarterback, but now he's playing as a wide receiver. He's also on the kick team now. So he's kind of he's kind of turned the keys over to Mikhail Clark. And now Lowe is trying to turn up the volume on his own night. Well, he's not deep for this kick. Back deep is Varney Dasson, number 13. As Eric Amaya with 3.37 to play in the fourth. Thunder up 47. Amaya's boot. Over the wall, out of play. That is a touchback. And so Pennsylvania Union will start with a fresh set of downs at the 20-yard line. That's one thing about running the football. It's a lot of Iron Man football being played. And the more guys you can play Iron Man, it uh, definitely helps out your team. Sometimes they're listed as athletes, you know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> when we get the roster, but... Uh, yeah. We had we had athlete we had a couple of guys listed as athlete right on this and they 
They actually got snuck up in here on my on my uh, card. Right. And then this guy didn't even play. Marquise Fells didn't even play. And that's the East Stroudsburg. That's East Stroudsburg, yes. <laughs> I love it, In the man. state of Stroudsburg. It was funny. Some of these schools I was, like, Googling, and Google will come back with a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a problem when Google says, say what? <laughs> right. First and 10 at the 20, Mikhail Clark out of the gun. A couple of receivers left. Quick out into the hands of McCraw, and he's going to be met by a couple of Thunder players right in front of us. Okay. Okay. And the... They will give McCraw to the 21-ish. Give him to the 22. That was an old school backyard palum up tackle right yeah. there. See, and you knew who your friends were in those games because you always, <laughs> if you heard the one guy saying, hold him up, hold him hold up. Him up. Like, dude, you don't want to play with him no more. You were just playing G.I. Joe at my house right. early, early that day. <laughs> what are you doing? Second down and eight. Man in motion is McCraw. Mikhail Clark getting the snap, and he is under pressure again. Another sack. First to get there, number nine, T.J. Warren. Devontae Linebacking Holmes. group having themselves a night. Yeah, Devontae This whole Devontae team has Holmes. had a night, though. Absolutely. I mean, both sides of the ball, whether it's whether it's a, the running of Ham, whether it's the defensive play of Warren and, and, uh, and Williams, that offensive line, I mean, there's been a lot of good in this football game. Yeah, for Charlotte. Salante. And, and just to sit here and watch it, like we, we, we up on it, right on the field, basically, and really get to get an expert opinion on it and paint that picture for the people listening with that John Grisham type des- description. Oh, I don't call quite John Grisham. Okay, James Patterson. Dr. Seuss, cat in the hat, something simple. <laughs> Clark flush, throwing oh. deep down the field. has got a man, McCraw. Oh, and he goes over the wall. Problem was, he didn't have the football. The thing about it was, the quarterback got clapped up. He took the hit, though. I, I, I give them, they still fight now. They still fight. Oh, they're playing hard. And the fact that he went over the wall, they out there fighting. Mikhail Clark took a shot, tried to find Tony McCraw, who made Absolutely. a valiant effort. Absolutely. Did not come up with the football, hit the, the padding, and then flipped over it. Right. The good news is, is McCraw is back in the huddle. Good. The bad news for Pennsylvania Union is that it's fourth down and about 13. With that effort, Tony McCraw made everybody from, He was the uh, sleeper. Yeah. Remember, Coach called him the sleeper yeah. pregame. Yeah. Don't be sleeping on Tony McCraw going forward. Gwen Ned Valley, Pennsylvania's finest. He, he made them happy with the effort. Absolutely. That was good, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. That was a good effort right there. So, yeah, Coach Hobbs, got to be real pleased seeing that. Right. His team's down 47 <laughs> points. Yeah. And his guys are still out there slugging it out, right. going after Going it. over the wall. Going over walls, right. They can't run through a wall, but they'll flip over one. Right. I probably would have looked at it like I was, you know, looking looking at a kite, a balloon or something. I wouldn't have. <laughs> I'm going to admit that. Now, we down. Yeah, but the problem is you could be looking at it and not realize the wall's there and you flip over anyway. <laughs> so they just <laughs> right. go after the ball. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if he'd have made that catch? Oh, man. That would have been, I mean, that would have been something else. All right, Calvin Lowell will be the motion man on the fourth and 13. Clark, under pressure, flush, throws Wobbler, and that's going to fall out of play, incomplete, as Mikhail Clark was running for his life. He was being chased by Raleigh White and Fred Williams. And that's a fourth down. That's a turnover on downs with 55 seconds to play. Here in the football game, and that should just about do it. I got to talk to the ownership group because usually when the footballs go into the stands, the fans get to keep them. That was that was the old one. <laughs> that was the old arena league. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's gotta... not that's not how this one works. I, I was but told that too. We got some big dogs on the team. I now. understand. No, I understand. All of them are big dogs now. And they, they, look, they those are. dogs are barking tonight. They're happy. Right, right. That little, that little shit group of dogs, they're real happy tonight. Their they team's up by uh, 47 with under a minute to play in their yeah. season opener. <laughs> and they've, they've, look, I don't want to say they've made this look easy, but they've kind of made it look easy. No, they have. They really have. At times, the Thunder have made this look easy and how it's supposed to be. One, like we said, 
they're clearly a more talented team, and they're supposed to have done this at the beginning of the game, and that margin could have been bigger than that. But, yeah. the, but the fact that the Thunder held them to 12 points in the arena of football, because yeah. it's usually a shootout. I mean, that's you know, that's that's almost a shutout. It is. I mean, I agree. It's, it's two scores. Yeah. I mean, they did score twice. Right. But in this game, holding a team to 12 points and is like holding a team to a field goal. Absolutely. You know, in, in outdoor 11 on 11. Absolutely. So Jalen McClendon in and uh, to finish things up here. I wonder if they're going to run anything. I don't really think you know, run anything to try to score. You know what? They're going to they're going to put they're going to put Lancaster in motion. Give us to Ham, and Ham gets upended at about mm. the seven yard line. Give Alan Lemire the tackle. But the play going out of bounds into the wall stops the clock at 49 seconds. So now the Thunder have a first and 10, or first and goal, I should say, at the 6. So they're going in again. Well, at least they're going to try. Yeah, the clock, actually, the clock actually starts once the ball is spotted. Right. So we're at a half minute to go in the fourth. We're not falling down at the goal line. No, no. Plug it on, out of the gun. Screens to Lancaster. Lancaster is going to be brought out, brought down out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Clock does stop with the tackle out of bounds. So now just 19 seconds to go. Well, Q, first time out of the box, yeah. the Charlotte Thunder get it done. One and zero. They get the dub. On QCB's birthday, March 20th. And shout out to my son, TJ. He turned 15 today as well. Wow. Birthday so, on your birthday. Oh, the day he was born, my birthday was it was forgotten. That was a real <laughs> McClendon. Touchdown for the icing on the cake. He goes in from six. And you're not going to stop Jalen McClendon once he gets going downhill. I'm telling you, man, I, I don't I know this is our first game, but uh McClendon, they got the right guy quarterback right now. Well they got the right guys. They got the right guys. Whether it's McClendon or Cologne, they got the right guys. That's a really good room to have. It is a good Really good now. pairing Absolutely. to have there. You know, Cologne's gonna come on here for and hold for the extra point. Everybody involved, everybody involved for the Thunder tonight, offense and defense, even special teams as well. Amaya's been Amaya's been solid. Glad he didn't miss that after I called him solid. <laughs> He's hit 12 straight free throws. Didn't he miss his next one? 66 to 12. Like Thunder in front with 13 seconds to play. And so the you know we we talked about the big dog ownership group. Big shout out to Thomas Davis, Ted Ginn Jr., Jeff Reed, Frank Garcia. Joe Moss. And you know what? All of them showed up. They're all here tonight. All of them here tonight. Yep. They got on the microphone before the game and everything. So, absolutely. Shout out to all them guys, man. And uh, they put their money with their mouth Mouth was yep. and is. And we out here now. And, uh, hey, the results. Excuse me. The prognosis. Let me use the big word. The prognosis. They got a dub. Sometimes our proclivity of using big words. You get it? Yeah. I, look, it's late. I don't need a headache. Don't, don't start making me think. Come on. Please. I beg you. Got it. Oh, man. That was awesome. Sorry. Sorry about that interrupting the conversation. I was just talking to uh, Calvin Lowe, who just threw a ripped glove on our broadcast table. Right. Amaya. Uh, that's off the netting. Let me tell you something. Is that if that's not the so, icing on my birthday cake? I don't know what is. Oh, no yeah. problem, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Amaya hits the netting on the kick, and that is a point. Yeah, it is. So Eric Amaya enters the score sheet on his own. Now, I don't know what that was about. He kicked it. He made a field goal from 50 yards. Right. And it hit the netting first. Right. So that counts as a point. It hit the, hit the net inside the uprights. That's a point. Okay. So you can score when you're giving the ball back. 
And as a result of that point, it's not a touchback. It's more of a penalty for the opposition because look where the ball spot. They get it at their own five now as opposed to the 20 for a touchback. So, so that's good. The kicker team gets the point. He gets the extra point, then an extra point on the kickoff, and then pins him back at the five with 13 seconds to play. I like that play. rule. That's a good rule. <laughs> I, I like I'm that rule. Fan. I'm glad I got to witness that. <laughs> Maybe we'll see it again next week. Right. Clark dropped in the end zone. Rolly White. Oh, they're not going to put him in the end zone. They're going to put him at the one-inch line with seven seconds on the clock. That is not a safety. I'm not I'm not sure how that's not a safety, but that's okay. Let me tell you what's going on. That was Rolly White, correct? Yes. So right now, the Thunder in the huddle, and they say, okay, now who hadn't had a sack yet? Oh, but Rolly had one. Oh, he had one? He oh. had, I think he had the safety oh, okay. earlier. Okay, there we go. They, they just yes. handed him out. He was looking for his second safety of the game. Wow. It's a final. The Charlotte Thunder roll into the 2021 season and pick up a 60. Oh, they, no, they did not give him the safety. So that final score is not correct. 67 to 12 is your final because they did not spot him on the safety. The scoreboard has it incorrect, but you see it properly on the screen. Your final score, Charlotte Thunder open up their 2021 season in fine fashion with a 67-12 victory over Pennsylvania Union. We saw a lot of things tonight, Q, but the one thing that we have to agree on is that we saw a total team effort by the guys in black. Let me tell you something. I'm going to piggyback on your team effort line because that's exactly what it was. All aspects of the, uh, uh, the uh, Charlotte Thunder was contributing to the victory tonight. We're talking about special teams, offense, defense, the coaching staff. Everybody contributed. Everybody, everybody made plays. Just when you thought it was one playmaker, somebody else will make a play. Then they bring another quarterback. He'll make a play. So, hey, read option. They was pulling hats out the uh, tricks, out the hat. I enjoyed every, every last bit of it. What we're seeing right now is both teams saying a post-game prayer. You and I were talking that this was, without question, a total team effort. Offense, defense, special teams. you got to be pleased with the way it turned out tonight. Yeah, it is. You know, um, anytime you can get a win, you got to be happy about that. Um, I just felt like we could have played a lot better football. We played real sloppy football. You know, the last three days we didn't get a chance to practice because of the weather. And it kind of showed on offense and defense. We felt like we, we we didn't play as fast as we normally would like to play. But the thing is, man, we were, we, we played good enough to get the win. And I, I feel like we, it's a lot we got to work on. One of the main things is definitely get in better shape. <laughs> I mean, it was hot in here, you know, very hot. The guys are winning it. Some of the guys that came out of college never played this game, and it was like a deer in the headlight in the first half, and they were very winded. So we got some work to do to get better as we move along in the future. We, we talked about it during the broadcast that you guys didn't practice Wednesday because you guys are doing field install right, by right, yourselves. Right. The players were installing the field. Right. So you lost a day of practice there. You don't practice indoors. You've been practicing outdoors. Yeah. Hopefully that will change down the road. But overall, while you say it was sloppy, it's still a win. And these yeah, guys have something to build off of. Definitely. And, and that's a, something that I try to play on the mind of our ball players because when you don't practice inside the arena, as you can see, it's all about timing. It's about spacing. And it's hard to duplicate that when you're outside because, look, this wall don't move. You saw some guys go over the wall. But it's going to take us getting hopefully in this arena next week if uh, they'll let us in here so we can work on getting that timing down. As you move forward, though, you got plenty of good things to build on. I know you talked about the sloppiness. Right. But the, the good feelings of a win, that, that can't be replaced. I no, mean, that, no. that, that carries on. <laughs> it does. I, I mean, I, I'm happy, but I just want to get better. And I think um, with a lot of the young guys we have, that they, they got a lot of work to do. they got a lot of growing up to do. Um, like I told you, what did you think about Jimmy Thomas? <laughs> As advertised. He's a grown man. As advertised. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, we're going to get a lot, There's a lot of guys we could single out. It's a lot of guys. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But I, I tell you what, we got to put a lot of work in if we, if we want to make a run at the championship. Yeah. Um, I, I just feel like we're a better team than what we played like tonight. That's all. Well, 67 to 12 in the opener is, is nothing to sneeze at. You said yeah. there's a lot of work to be done to get better. And, boy, if this team's going to get a lot better, I, I 
fear for what the other teams in the league are going to have to face <laughs> when they totally play agree. again. I totally agree. But I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with the win, but we got to get back to work Monday morning. Well, I'll, I'll let you enjoy this one okay. with your team. Hey, thanks, thanks so Coach. Let me take right. those from you. That's head coach Irvin Bryson joining us here at Field Level. Hey, Q, why don't you come on in? We'll, uh, we'll put a bow on this thing. Uh, as Coach Bryson uh, indicated, uh, you know, there was, there's a lot to be said for the way that his team played tonight, but he also kind of indicated what we had been talking about during the broadcast. There's a lot to be worked on. There's a, there was a lot of sloppy play. But overall, when you get a win and you can take that win, you can bank it, and you can move on to the next one, the good feelings, they can't be replaced. Absolutely. And uh, what they did, like I said, they, they won the game in every aspect of the game, special teams, offense, defense, coaching. I like the play calling. They, wasn't, uh, they switched it up. They started off with a run-heavy offense, and they switched it up. They switched up quarterbacks. McClendon came in here and looked like I think he should be the starter, but I'm not the coach. But, you know, I like, I, I like what I've seen, and uh, I think they got a very bright future. And the score should have been a larger margin than yeah. that. But for them to hold, a team in arena football of 12 points, that says a lot about your defense. Yeah, so we said it during the broadcast. It's essentially holding a team to a field goal in 11-on-11 football. So Charlotte Thunder pick up a win in their opener against the Pennsylvania Union. Next week, back here, 7.30. That's right. <laughs> we'll do it all again. Week number two is the Thunder. Week number two for the Thunder. This is actually, I think, week three uh, overall for the league. Right. So the Thunder in Pennsylvania getting a bit of a late start uh, going forward. But we'll be back here ringside. Courtside, rinkside, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> here on uh, on Charlotte Thunder TV. For QCB, I'm Mike Salarte. Thanks for joining us. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast, and if you're a Thunder fan, we know you enjoyed the outcome. 67-12, to 12, the Thunder, winners over Pennsylvania Union.